Welcome to Analytics with Nax. This is another video in the end to end series where I'm going to discuss about Power BI visuals. Yes, when it comes to visual, choosing a right visual is very important because whatever work we do, we build data warehouse, we build data strategy to our organization. And if people choose um, wrong visuals, then it becomes collapsed. The entire system, whatever built, doesn't make any sense. So this topic is very important in data analytics field where choosing a right visual in right context is very important. Even this is, will be very challenging for the beginners, even for the experienced people, they have to understand what is the purpose of each visual so that they can able to choose um, visuals on their own. That will help business to take decisions. So this topic or uh, this video is going to focus on the following topics introduction to power bi visuals and we will start with uh, basic visuals in power bi and slicers then going uh, forward we will discuss about maps kpi advanced visuals and custom visuals these are the different categories i categorized and um, Choosing that visual depends upon what kind of analysis you're going to make that we'll talk about in introduction. Let's try to check it out. What are the visuals we are going to see as part of this video? So you can see from basics, you can going to learn bar chart, line chart, and what are the basic visuals present in Power BI as well as slicers and advanced and custom visuals. This is about the topic we are going to see today and to before begin our uh, content this channel contains the uh, free content worth thousand dollars or eighty thousand worth inr so please utilize this channel which covers ssis ssas ssrs basically microsoft business intelligence platform along with power bi this channel also contains sql server for beginners they can learn sql using this playlist with this note, let's begin our today's topic, Power BI Visuals Introduction. As I said before, considering choosing a visual is um, difficult for beginners. That comes uh, this guidelines. Uh, uh, the, this credit goes to SQL BI. Uh, they have a company called OKVIS. They have categorized based on what kind of data or what kind of operations you're going to perform you can be able to choose it if you do a comparison you can use bar chart and line chart combinations and uh, those kind of stuff right if it is change over time if you use um, year and a month kind of analysis for each metric sales sales across each year then you can use the line charts and different kinds of charts available so this is like uh, available in internet you can go and check it out based on this you can be able to um, search for uh, what kind of analysis you're going to make and then you can choose a particular visual regarding the topics or i mean choosing this requires for each visual what is the purpose right that you will get clarified after watching this entire video so with this note let's begin our first topic power bi basic visuals bar chart and column charts in power bi this is part of visuals with nax series where i didn't cover this basic visual that's why i thought of covering it in this series now so to begin with whatever you see here the if the bars are at the horizontally present then it is called a bar chart and when the bars are vertically arranged it's called the column chart and there are other types of charts along with this in the uh, Power BI or any other reporting tool. There is stack bar chart and stack column chart, 100% stack, 100% stack column chart. All other things we will see as part of this video. When to use it. If you are new to this channel, hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon for notification. Let's begin. I use AdventureWorks database so you can also use to follow 
this video and practice so let's begin with the cluster, clustered column chart the names are a little tricky you know <laughs> it's tongue twister kind of so clustered column chart where you can have analyze your uh, measures like in from the sales sales amount and then you can analyze with any of the categorical value let's consider product category and let me increase the value slightly um, let's go for 16 so that everyone can view it so from the initial glitch itself you can be able to understand the bikes are the most selling products and I don't think any difference between a clustered bar chart and column chart apart from the orientation like the column chart appears over here and your clustered bar chart appears in the <coughs> over here the bars are appearing horizontally so this is the core difference and uh, it may be in some business scenarios they have some criteria some charts or some metrics should be shown like bar charts and some metrics should be shown in column charts you know so that difference the people interchangeably use um, a column chart or bar chart uh, mostly in when technically or uh, from the developer's perspective we will use this uh, column bar chart for um, some kind of uh, space issues when <laughs> you do not fit here we will switch over here and make it like this you know so this is how uh, people will develop and when you consider um, other key things about uh, this bar chart let's get rid of um, um, this x axis so we can go with hierarchy usually when you have your uh, column chart along with your uh, data over here right you can have a comparison you can see now I'm analyzing by quarter for each year each quarter I want to compare the previous quarter so I've written a simple measure over here when I drag and drop this one same period last year I can able to compare the results like for 2020 quarter one 2019 quarter one value will appear next to oh my bar in 2020 quarter one see 2019 quarter one value is 6769487 here 2020 quarter one this value will appear 6769487 which is nothing but same period last year this is the value for 2020 quarter one sales amount if you see the labels the labels measures changes so these kind of comparison is more effective when you use the column chart whereas when you analyze like this it won't give very good comparison uh, obviously as I said did whether based on the space issues people interchangeably use all the functionalities remain same for the bar chart as well as the column chart so this is one thing I want to uh, highlight like for comparison people go for it then let's get rid of this then in the same quarter I want to understand what are the best selling uh, products i mean what products i sold when i put it in a legend you can see for each quarter this legend use it to split within that categorical value so if you see here this is the 2009 quarter one and this is the bikes value and this is your components value we can make it zoom and then you can start comparing so you can see from uh, this diagram the legend used to split each categorical value within it forms like a group so this is what a legend is instead of keeping this in legend you can also keep this category in a small multiples what it will do it will uh, enhance or um, whatever you see in your um, visuals in a single a whole category for each value in this category it will have the its own separate charts okay which will be combined in a single chart over here you see the bikes components accessories everything combined as a 
individual charts this is what a small multiples the same same chart whatever you are looking here will be multiplied for the number of members that is what small multiples is so these are the different options you have got uh, for your um, column chart the same options right everything remains same for your bar chart as well there is nothing much i can explain it here let's try to move on to understanding about stacked and 100 percentage stacked let's start with stacked column chart so here as i said the properties remain same x axis y axis when you put in the legend okay the category last time what happens in the column chart within this category there are four bars okay but in the stacked column chart what will happen the bar the single bar remains it will split the total value will be split across your stack M meaning like instead of four bars let us copy and show it to you so top one is the stacked column chart and the bottom one is going to be the column chart so this is the difference so basically within that category you are seeing uh, different uh, legends in a separate bars that is your column chart it is strict clustered column chart everything will be shown in the column but in the column chart you want to show the values as a stack these categories so this value on top of this this value on top of this if it becomes like this then it becomes a stack what is the insight you are getting out of this charts basically from the looks of it you can easily see this particular bikes okay contributes to you more that is what you can able to figure it out easily and from the stack if you see when you go for 100 percentage stack column chart you can see now based on the total value over here okay uh, you have different bars with the different uh, proportion I mean this is low value that's why it compared to 2019 quarter 3 it is very smaller when you go to 100 percentage stat column chart you see all the values are presented in a percentage manner so it will be like 100 percentage out of 100 percentage what is your bikes contribution even with the value it will show okay but you see 100 percentage stack so all the bars over here will be shown against 100 percentage now to show the difference properly let us have the stacked bus chart here and the below i will go for stacked column chart so this is the difference this is stacked column chart and this is the stacked 100 percentage stacked column chart so this 100 percentage stacked column chart will have the um, your um, all the bars contribute to 100 percentage and in that 100 percentage how much each category has been contributed and whereas in this um, stacked column chart you have the actual proportions that is actual values split across each categorical value so this is the core differences based on the different comparison you can uh, go for different charts this is what your column chart and whatever I explained it is same applicable to your bar charts when I click on here this remains same my looks of it so this is somewhat better understanding or um, which, which will give you good uh, look when you have uh, something like recruitment analysis or how many people out of thousand people how many of them passed how many of them failed so those kind of analysis you can make based on the different interviews happen so it, it depends upon your um, business need you will choose either of your bar or column charts and bar charts and column charts are more or less same only except with the directions if you like this video hit the thumbs up button and comment below for queries and do remember that data is your asset a line chart in the visuals with NAC series let's begin our today's topic when to use a line chart so 
this is used to track changes over short and long period of time basically you want to compare a measure against uh, your date or time then you can go for a line graph and line graph can also be used to compare changes over same period of time for more than one group and typically like you have a line graph and you want to compare the measure against a group of uh, elements like location 1 location 2 location 3 how it performed so you will have a three lines and you can compare over the period right so i will show it once using a demo in power bi how it looks like and additional feature is like a secondary axis allows us to represent and visualize multiple data series without need to use additional charts this is like you are comparing one single measure in a line chart and you can also add another measure in the line chart to compare two different measures in the same same chart that is the one of the advantages of using a line chart and a secondary axis to compare measure with different scales of comparison this is another important point where your measure 1 will have a scale that is range that range of uh, values is from 0 to 100 and the second measure can have a range from 100 to 2000 also right how you can compare right so uh, the values are the scales of two different measures are very uh, it is very different so you can compare using a line chart once we move on to uh, power bi demo you can understand it better let's move on to power bi so this is the line chart you can see here i have used the line chart here and let's try to build the line chart as i said before we need to use the dim date right i use uh, the dim date is connected to fact internet sales this is the adventure works db and so i use the dim date in the x axis then I will remove this uh, day. I am not going to drill down till uh, day. So I am removing it. And for uh, I want to compare the order quantity. So here it is. And I will remove this filter. Actually I filtered long back. So you see there are four years of data. And 2013 you have a very decent data. Let us drill down to 2013. And we will see it the data over here okay now you can see here from from january till october you have uh, data in 2013 so this is the this way you can see the data easily in the line chart you can see the trend that is upward trend where from the jan and till april it is growing and april to july it was stable then again there is an increase this is what you can easily figure it out as i said before you can have a different category of comparison right before that let me increase the size of this um, visual i mean to say the axis so that it will be visible to everyone those who are viewing this video okay this is fine now i'm coming to the point number two that we have discussed like you can have uh, more than one group of comparison what it mean so here you have a concept called legend right so the same comparison this is overall i want to compare along for the different territories so i can have a territory group here so now you can see quickly out of which the uh, north america has performed really well compared to other territories and you can see the trend as well right so this way you can easily compare when you drill down further there was slight uh, changes over here for different uh, period in this uh, it is light i mean it, there was a decrease whereas uh, for uh, north america it was an increase whereas for uh, europe it was a decrease so you can easily compare the results between different groups in line chart so the another point what we have discussed about the line chart is that you have a secondary axis meaning like you can also add another 
measure of comparison what it says here you can see the quantity over here is it is the quantity is not more than 0 to 3000 that is the maximum scale right let me increase the y-axis as well so let me increase the size so now you can see the axis value ranges from 0 to 3000 that is maximum sales quantity doesn't exceeded 3k it is automatically fetched based on the data available now when i add try to add sales amount in the secondary value what it says it will not allow me because as i said before either you can use the group of values comparison here or once you remove legend now you can able to add the secondary axis now what happen you can see here here the value the value of the quantity ranges from 0 to 6k it is automatically adjusted but maximum there is no 6k and all okay this blue line light blue indicates order quantity whereas the dark blue indicates the sales amount you can see the scale of this uh, uh, sales amount ranging from 0.5 million to 2.5 million whereas quantity is 0 to 6k this is what the scale comparison okay how you can uh, change it you can go here and again you can increase the size so in this futures are not available in other charts when you copy and paste this chart into some bar chart kind of stuff right you do not have option of secondary access and all right you can compare the two here what is the difference i want to make you to understand is like here in the bar chart you have uh, only one scale here zero to four or some two million it is whichever is highest that is sales amount against you measuring the sales quantity right so this comparison will not be useful here because the sales quantity is very minimal compared to the sales amount so you cannot compare in this bar charts that is why you can go for this line charts when you want to compare two different measures having different scales right you can add it in the secondary axis that is what I want to explain and you can add the legend here whereas uh, in the bar chart that is different story but the, to compare two different meshes having different scale you need to go for the line chart so this is what uh, I want to highlight so some of the properties to highlight here is like um, you can change uh, this to instead of continuous you can change to categorical so that it will have uh, whatever appear in the hierarchy and you can set the concatenate label so that it will appear like proper hierarchy the year at the bottom and followed by a quarter and you can see the value here uh, and uh, for this you need to ensure like uh, sort by year quarter month okay instead of order quantity this should be ensured and you will have a proper value I hope uh, this is collapsed uh, that is fine ascending okay ascending and you should you should uh, specify this value and other properties are uh, common across uh, other charts that is uh, as usual and you can explore it always if what is area chart and stack area chart and how to use it in power bi this is part of visuals with nax series if you are new to this channel hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon for notification let's begin when to use this area chart and the stacked area chart basically this is the area chart and this is the stacked area chart and this area chart and stacked area chart can be used to analyze the trend over the time series like and you might have asked me like the same thing was uh, we can do it in the line chart so what is the core difference we need to understand and between the line chart and area chart that is the first thing we need to understand let's try to have the line chart first and let's see what it makes um, let's go for core measure now from this line chart it, it is pretty clear that you can see the difference right uh, the different lines I mean to say like uh, there is a trend that is an increment trend that is increased trend the sales over July 2018 
and it is declined now in Jan 2019 then again you see the increasing trend and that is uh, some it is remains stable so this is the overall from the beginning till now there is a increasing trend now the same thing can be applied right I will just take a copy of this chart instead of this okay I have x axis uh, date and the sales amount instead of this I will use the area chart what it shows is like it is uh, area below that line chart basically it is a line chart and you can see the area below this line chart this shows the magnitude how much it is uh, more right I mean when you see how much in the area level you can see the magnitude of it how much it has grown right that is the core difference people wants to see as a magnitude difference then they will go for this area chart this is not only the thing and when you have analyzing this uh, chart against different category right there comes a huge difference now let us introduce one more category like product category wise in this line chart first okay so this gives different um, lines for each category right like when you see here uh, bikes components clothing and accessories and comparing you can able to quickly understand the bikes are having uh, more data that is it, it the line uh, is at the top okay which indicates this is the bikes are the most selling item when you have the same category wise split in your area chart what it happens so you see it comes under legend okay so basically what happens from this bottom till this bottom I mean from the top till this bottom the entire area components contributes to bike even you see from here maybe we can zoom in so from the bottom from the bottom of this axis x axis till this line contributes to components so the entire area is covered when you say blue it is not only from this green to here it is from the top till the x-axis 0 till this value it has been populated so this is the difference again the core differences you can see the magnitude of it you can see the difference between these two charts the it's like looks like a mountain like <laughs> as you can see the how much magnitude difference is that in area chart that is slightly you cannot able to find this difference so this is just a comparison and gives you the magnitude of the difference magnitude of the particular category which category is giving you more uh, the, uh, easily you can is able to identify this is the core difference let us get rid of this line chart because in order to understand the area chart I use the line chart for the comparison now let's have the area chart here what is the now it's the time for us to understand what is the stacked area chart let's try to copy this visual and paste it here at the bottom I have this visual now with me so let me choose the stacked area chart for this click on this visual and choose stacked area chart the axis remains same the x-axis is date and y-axis is your sales amount and in legend I have the category so when I press stacked area chart what happens now you see here uh, as soon as I use the stacked area chart each category stacked on e top of it right the highest magnitude magnitude means which has a huge volume or uh, the more data comes to the bottom okay you see here the bikes one comes here so from the bottom till this point it is bikes and from this point okay like over here from this point till this point it is the components okay that is the meaning of it so that data values are stacked here this is the core difference between your area chart and the stacked area chart this doesn't make any sense if you remove the category in between uh, the both the charts the stack chart and um, your uh, area chart remains same okay when you have only uh, one 
uh, you are measuring against only one measure you are not adding any other dimension in the legend so area chart and stacked area chart remain same when you have a measure and x-axis uh, dimension but as soon as you add any other uh, dimension then that makes a difference like stacked bar chart uh, each category sits on top of it whereas in your category in the area chart it is overall value from this point till x-axis zero point the entire value is covered okay uh, one more thing to highlight here is like the total value at the top let's go for july, uh, july 2019 you can see from here since it is stacked when you see at this top it will give you your total value you can able to analyze or grasp the total value it is around 14 million okay the total value whereas here in same july 2019 the total value is i mean you, you can see here it is not against uh, your total value uh, it is only below the 12 million which is meaning like the bikes starts from zero to the total value here uh, whatever contributes to bike so that is why it is not summing up you cannot sum up so this is another important difference you need to understand between stack and the area chart i hope you uh, understand about uh, area chart and stacked area chart what are the code differences and uh, other properties are as usual you can change the um, uh, some settings and properties background colors these are common to any other charts if you like this video hit the thumbs up button and comment below for queries do remember that data is your asset about multi record visual in the visuals with nax series so when to use this multi row card it's like where you can combine the multiple measures in a group you might have aware of a card visual where you can able to see only a single measure in that card visual in the case of uh, multi row card visual you can have more than one measures that is what you can combine multiple measures in a group card visual with a slice with a dimension meaning like in a typical single card visual you can have only a measure or you can have uh, some categorical value as first or max or um, last value in card visual what you can have is like along with the measures you can also have a dimension so you can slice your measures with your dimension as well that is another important feature it is alternative to a card visual for fancy look right i mean uh, it, it contains uh, some good look having a bar and you can change the colors so that is the another important factor you can go for it let's try to check it out how this visual works in power bi now we are in power bi and this is a typical uh, card visual and this is not our focus but to demonstrate a differentiate between the card and the multi row card i have add this uh, three visuals you can see the different measures here item amount let me increase the size uh, slightly so that um, it will be easy for you to view so this is the item amount and i will do the format painter this is fine item quantity and cost price each measure is um, viewed separately in a card visual this is the visual here you can see it here now coming to our subject we are focusing on multi row card so what it does so multi row card visual usually you can able to add multiple measures the same measures whatever we have seen item amount item quantity and cost price so you can see here these three amounts you can have it over here and you can have a more control also either you can view it in um, horizontal or vertical manner now it's in vertical and you can have it as a horizontal so based on sometimes like you cannot fit uh, the card visuals properly in those cases it can be a perfect alternative for you another good future as i mentioned it is having a um, bar control where i always like this uh, future you can see here you can add it so you can differentiate different bars with some coloring like for key measures here item amount item quantity cost price 
you can add it as a red and some other measures you can add it as a blue some different bars over here right so this is what one of the uh, fancy looking visual coming to the actual point over here is like you can add a dimension to it what i'm trying to say i have a single measure now where i'm going to have the category name like over here that is the a new dimension now as soon as i add it you can see i will slightly increase the size so that uh, people can view it i will increase the category uh, name as well categorical label it is not a categorical label it's a card title actually so when i increase it the category title okay you can see here for each category i have this item amount split it okay whereas in single card visual you cannot have it this is what a multi row card visual either you can have a multiple measures or a single measure with a dimension so it's not a single measure actually you can also have a another measure you can see now how it looks like so it combines these two measures in a single row okay it groups either you can use it as a two or multiple measures over like this okay either here this is one option or you can use it as a reduce reduct i mean as a vertical or horizontal bars okay this is second option and you can also what you can do is like you can add a, another dimension to it with multiple meshes what will happen here now you can expand it usually it is good to advisable it based on your business not more than two meshes like you can see properly different category i mean in each categorical item you have item amount and item quantity so basically used to measure the current year and previous year sales for different uh, um, categorical values so that easily compare our variance percentage right so those kind of measures can be easily analyzed so this is perfect measure for your uh, showing your kpis and with different coloring combinations i hope you like this table visual in power bi what it is when to use it let's try to check it out as part of this video basically like uh, the main purpose of this bi tools or power bi or any other bi tools is to visualize the data in a chart right i mean different visualization but still why this table visual i i have this table visual let us try to drag and drop this one why this table visual is relevant in many of the business cases and as you can see in our previous examples we have different types of charts over here like uh, which will give us uh, different informations in a quick manner right quickly we can able to understand uh, what is happening here but sometimes we want to see the data in a detailed manner are in a tabular format so that will gives us uh, some more uh, informations right and you can also have a typical conventional reporting in the tabular level information you find the data and you want to have some bar charts or some formatting options right so those kinds of conventional reporting we can use the table format so what i'm trying to say let's try to and having said that uh, this table will show also like uh, any other visual it will group the items like uh, when i want to see the category wise sales you see only the category and then you say the total sales amount so this table visual also behaves like any other visual it groups by category and provides you the sum of aggregation of your values this is one kind of scenario you can uh, verify it for verification purpose or any other purpose you can use this table visual and predominantly most of the cases this table visual used when you want to see the detail information like uh, uh, whatever you have your total sales we will uh, go for each uh, order level and um, item level sales and then you can verify it right so what i'm trying to say is let's try to have all the uh, values over here um there is no oh uh, i think it is hidden or something yes you can see a lot of columns are hidden let's try to uncheck order line item 
okay as soon as you have your order line item then you can have all the orders for each line then i can have the product standalone or uh, product um, color category and what date it has uh, sold so let me have that one so instead of date i just want the date as well here so uh, let us put in the sequence this order number this is the date what is the cast i don't want the cast right now and let's put the measure at the last so this is the typical um, table and let's try to do a slight uh, formatting let's try to increase the color so these are the some of the properties you can play around so basically now you can see like um, you can have a table visual so you can see the detailed information when you want to see the one particular order in details like if you say if you filter by this order then you see what are the products sold if you have multiple line items you can see your detail items as well this is the main purpose we will go for this table visual so seeing the detail level information and one more thing people wants to do is like lot of formatting options you can choose like either you can if you say like uh, i just want to have um, whichever is less than 100 sales right i want to mark it as red otherwise it is green or i want to have um, bars over here against the total value right different formatting options you can choose i've just show you quick formatting like right click on the sales amount you can say uh, background color uh, i will go for a quick um, um, formatting option if it is the number okay the total value itself if the number is greater than zero and less than or equal to 100 then i will mark it as a slight red and if it is greater than 100 okay and um, less than it can be anything so i'll just give the maximum number right now and let it be a light green right so i think it exceeded the value let's say ah okay i changed different values here one cannot be percentage another cannot be a number so now you can see if it is less than 100 i showed in red and you can see everything turns to green even other formatting options available like i can add a data bars so uh, based on certain values how you want to show the uh, data bus right lowest value should be um, uh, in this color and data bus so these kind of formattings i'm saying so these are possible because these are the typical conventional reports people use to familiar with so based on certain conditions you change you can add background colors you can have uh, bars inside the each column and you can do multiple options so this is what uh, you will use this uh, table virtual also when you want to use the drill through future like over here when you want to see the details of it when you right click you will get the drill through future right for that most of the time you will design this table visual you use this table visual and enable the drill through here like um, uh, what, what I'm trying to say is I want to navigate from this quarter okay to see the detail data so in that case that quarter whatever from where you want to drill through you need to add it here in the drill through field okay as soon as you add it this quarter as soon as you add it you can go here and right click you can see drill through this table this table is nothing but this sheet you can come and see the details of that particular uh, chart as well i mean this chart gives you the overall level and this will give you the detail level so basically you will use uh, this table in the drill through reports so this is the different scenarios you will use your table visuals and finally i would just want to highlight some of the properties you can um, uh, choose of like um, you can choose the uh, style uh, like bold header how it looks like so these are some of the formatting options so let's go for default and um, sometimes what you want to do is you want to format only for this column so you can go to this column and choose that column and apply to 
labels apply to headers and what you are going to do i want to apply this blue for this color so like this formattings you can choose by a column okay this is another important property and other properties like uh, you whether you want a total or not you can ignore it but sometimes the total is not relevant at all because you are showing only the list of uh, values there won't be any sum at all so in that cases you can ignore this totals as well so these properties are generally very easy to um, know like <coughs> this you can play around I hope you understand uh, the purpose of table visual a matrix visual which is a pretty basic visual in power bi those who are from excel background this is not uh, new to them it is typically a pivot table in the excel and but it comes with a lot of uh, other uh, options as well and those who have started the career in power bi they think like uh, it is uh, table visual it is pretty much uh, uh, instead of using table they can go for matrix it is not as simple as that it is more or less um, when you compare you cannot compare with table visual that is what i meant let us try to check it out when to use it it is easier to display information across multiple dimension this is what it is important whereas in case of table visual you can display the information in only two dimension and it supports stepped out layout i will explain it what is meant by stepped out and matrix automatically aggregates the data it enables you to drill down i will show it how it automatically aggregates and it is not alternative to table this is the what i meant see because you want to display information in table either you can go for table or matrix that is not the way you can go for matrix matrix has its own um, its advantages like you can analyze the data across multiple dimension let's check it out how so we are in power bi where i have uh, this table visual and let me put this one here and this is the matrix visual the table visual you can see here you can keep adding the columns or different uh, columns and if you have measures it will aggregate it right this is what it will do so you can act analyze across only two dimension rows and columns whereas in case of matrix visual you can keep adding the columns in rows and columns and also the values separately so this is where the multi dimensional analysis comes into picture this is the one of the core difference you need to understand let's forget about the table visual and let us focus on this um, the matrix visual how we can build so i want to analyze by product category and product name okay so product name can be here so as soon as i add it you can see the plus symbol it creates the hierarchy so let me increase the column headers so so that it will be visible to everyone so this is column header i think it's a grid value i can increase the size okay as soon as i add this uh, value here it is like a rows and then i can add some value here i want to analyze quantity here now so this is one way of analyzing but what comes the multi dimensional here you can also had add some columns in the column axis so you are analyzing the data in different axis one is by product another by location and you can analyze this this is what we call it as multi dimensional analysis and also you can see you can uh, it is already under uh, hierarchy you can drill down from here so you can right click and expand or drill down okay when you drill down you are going one level down as well over here this is another important feature and one more thing is like you can also add another hierarchy over here what i'm saying i can add order type on top of this so you are analyzing multiple hierarchies here now you can see as soon as you add it the drill down by which you want to drill down see the drill down is appearing on rows or drill down by columns both ways you can be able to drill down here now i am drilling down only by the columns online and offline order and then it this level remains same 
now I can drill down further from here and switching to rows I can drill down from here so this is once you can see at the higher level then you can go at the lower levels so this is what it is it is uh, not as simple like uh, replacement to your table visual it is it has more options that is what I'm trying to explain I hope uh, this is fine let me remove this one let us try to uh, expand this one and some of the properties uh, we can check it up here is like you can go here and you can choose uh, different styles uh, based on uh, uh, which one you like uh, I prefer always a default option so that alternative rows will be uh, like gray and white so this is good so other options you can try it out sparse or bold header some other options right this is the first option I want to highlight next is like you can add a vertical grid you can see uh, some line is appearing over here uh, at the vertical and you can also add the horizontal grids as well these are the some of the things which make you to uh, appear the reports very uh, neat right and one important uh, property here is like column headers you can uh, these properties are very common like you can change the background colors uh, font everything and here is the catch the row headers where you have a lot more options like stepped out layer what is called so when you uncheck it you can see here this will appear at next level right i mean step out layout stepped layout so this is like step first step second step or it is like uh, you are getting uh, what i'm trying to say so when you switch it off this will not be part of uh, this underneath it will con not come underneath so it will be like step layout now okay though this is what this step layout you can able to uh, understand it and you can change the size as well i mean how much indentation for this step layout you want to appear so this is one of the important property over here and um, you can also add some symbol whether you want that uh, plus symbol or not if this is a plus or minus icon so once you uh, minimize it you can have the plus symbol here you can control this property as well so these are the one of the important properties that will appear only in the matrix row headers option then one more important thing i want to highlight is like you can control the totals for this it is a subtotal whether you need subtotal or not at the top okay so uh, again you want the column total or some other options so this is you these features you need it or not you can always control it this is what I said this is not just a replacement of a table visual this is a lot more and even the grand total whether you need it or not you can control it then one important property I want to highlight is like conditional formatting where you can set to some of the properties like I do not wish this to appear or uh, some tricky things like you can add some columns and sometimes you do not apply that particular property for the total alone so those control you can make it over here so here you can see the quantity and you have a font color enabled so uh, where that is I think it's in the field formatting not in conditional formatting what I'm trying to say is this quantity I'm saying like uh, font color is uh, uh, orange okay and this is not applicable to the header or the values so this is not will appear for that okay that is what and this will apply to totals as well whatever properties you said it should apply only to the total not for the values subtotals okay it's a subtotals appear like that but the total will appear differently so these kind of properties you can able to control in the field formatting and you can see uh, always either you can expand it like this or you can also use the collapse the entire level or all function okay so that it will collapse it so there are a lot more features and other features like drill through drill down or default features and other properties are very common over here 
pie chart in visuals with NAC series. So when to use it? It is used to provide a contribution of different values to a total. In other words, we can say when you are trying to compare parts of a whole. So both points are similar meaning, meaning like you have a different categorical values and you want to analyze the total by each categorical value, how much it has contributed to the total. So that is what it is. And it is not meant for the changes over time. It, it is not useful when you have a time based analysis, you cannot use this visual. Mostly it's for categorical distribution analysis. Mostly in my videos, I will say when to use it. But this particular visual is special. Like when you should also know when not to use it. So we will check it out in the demo. Let's jump into demo. We are in Power BI. Let me explain the model first. So it's a typical adventure works. I have fact table. It is connected to territory. And I have a snowflake um, dimension here where it is directly related to product and product subcategory and category. So when you apply filter here, it will propagate here. And from this table, it will propagate here. And that in turn filters the fact table. So this is the simple model now. Let's jump into our uh, demo. We will have our pie chart over here. And let me drag and uh, zoom it out. I want to analyze the order quantity. So when I click on it, it will go here. Now I will use the product English category name. So let me increase the uh, some of the properties here, detail label. Let me increase the size. And um, now I will increase the legend as well. So legend is this one and this is the detail label. Now as we discussed uh, earlier, it is used to give you the contribution of this category against the total. The total quantity is around um, something uh, 60k and for that 60k it has split it right this accessory is contributed 59 percentage that is the contribution test provided. this is the biggest contributor of the sales quantity and followed by bikes and clothing so when you when you can use it when you want to see the distribution and you have very less quantities i mean to say less categorical values I can say maximum it should be five categories and you can go for pie chart. If it is exceeding more than five, pie chart is not your choice. So this is about uh, pie chart and I am going to demonstrate when you should not use it. The same pie chart I will have it here. Okay and I will use the order quantity. This time instead of um, products uh, category, I will use product subcategory. This time you can see I will use the same formatting behavior here. As you can see here in this uh, product subcategory, this chart is not so effective you can see the distribution is uh, between uh, the smaller proportion whichever is contributed it doesn't look good and we cannot able to analyze much better so this is where the problem comes so when you have a more categorical values you should not go for the pie chart and also this chart will um, ignore some of the least contributed item sometimes uh, in some cases like you see here this is contributed 28 percentage and this particular value like the bike stands it has contributed very less sometimes this will not be visible at all so this chart is not useful when you have more categorical values so how usually we need to manage is like we need to create a hierarchy this in turn contains hierarchy you can keep the categorical name first okay then in turn you can go inside now from accessories when you drill down you filter down somewhat so this is somewhat better than directly accessing the subcategory right so when you click from here it will be further it was very decent now 
okay when you click on bikes you can see here right so this is how you can manage that instead of directly accessing or analyzing using subcategory you need to go for it this is kind of a workaround and you can use make use of the hierarchies as well so these are the some of the issues i want to highlight like if you have more uh, categorical values you cannot use the pie chart and then if one category has 90 percentage contribution and other has very less contrib one percentage two percentage you should not go for it because the least contributor will not be shown at all sometimes so that is the another issue you will face i hope you understand about this pie chart and other properties uh, i want to highlight one important property here is like detail label here you can mention different options over here whether you want to only show the uh, i will delete this one it is not required uh, so whether you want to show only the category or you want to show um, along with category and data value so data value means this one right i mean whatever value contributes or data value and percentage of total so as already it has a color here so you can use this format this will be perfect choice by default choice as well otherwise you can choose all details so one important tip here is like when you use all values here all details do not use the labels that will save your space because already you have a, a color wise color then you, you should not use this one this is the point i want to make so in this case if you choose it make it as legend half so at a point i want to highlight is like there is a similar property everything remains same for a donut chart the pie chart and donut chart the only thing it differs is like it will having a hole at the center that that is what so it it will be like uh, slices here where it will be like um, in the donut you have different pieces so that is the only difference so you can interchangeably use a pie chart or donut chart whichever suits for it e even all other properties remain same I hope uh, some of the tips, tricks and when to use it, when not to use it, you are aware of now with respect to pie chart. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button and comment below for queries. And do remember that data is your asset. This channel contains the uh, free content worth $1,000 or 80000 worth INR. So please utilize this channel which covers SSIS, SSAS, SSRS, basically Microsoft Business Intelligence Platform along with Power BI. This channel also contains SQL Server for beginners. They can learn SQL using this playlist. What is scattered bubble chart? It is called a scatter chart or a bubble chart, right? I will tell you why. And we are going to deep dive into this visual in visuals with Max series. So when to use uh, this visual, it's like scatter chart shows a relationship between two numerical values. Basically, you have uh, numerical values and you want to see the relationship between those two. Then you can go for scatter chart. And a bubble chart is replaces the data points with the bubbles. Basically, once you put these two values in x axis and y axis, there will be a small bubble appearing, which is nothing but your data points. That is what your bubble chart becomes. And you can have a bubble size representing additional third data dimension to it. Say for example, I have set x-axis as cost price and y-axis as item quantity. Then each data points represents a bubble. Then I can change the size of the bubble, how much it has been sold based on the selling price. Right? You can introduce a third dimension or you can use the same dimension used in x y-axis. Right? Then you can use uh, bubble size to be increased. So you are introducing a third dimension into it. To show patterns in a large data set, for example, showing linear or non-linear trends, clusters or outliers. This is so important um, in case of um, scatter chart because you have a huge data set. 
and you want to compare the relationship between the identify the relationship between two numerical values it is not possible with conventional bar chart or pie chart because you say like um, the item quantity sold can be ranging from 1 to 100 or 1 to 300 whatever it can be and the cost price can be different if you have huge products so if you have to compare these two combination you can find the clusters clustered in the sense which two combination between x and y axis you have more sales forming a very big population that is called a clusters outliers something away from your populated region one or two values that appear outside the combination that is unexceptional cases where even the cost price is more say for example two or two thousand or three thousand but you, whatever you are selling is like um you are having some values between 600 to 1000 but some values it's appeared to thousand so it is used to find errors in your data also outliers and also you can identify uh, it is abnormal cases right so those kinds are called outliers i will try to explain it in the graph so these are the some of the use cases you can go for a scatter bubble chart let's jump into demo i am in power bi now we are having the same uh, naga common data set today i am going to find a relationship between cost price and item quantity and i will use the bubble size for selling price so based on your business you can use similar um, relationship because your business requires uh, different numerical quantities to be compared right in that cases you can go for this chart so scatter chart first things first let us try to drop this one here and use the cost price in the x-axis then use the item quantity in the y-axis i hope you can see here a single dot appearing okay why it is because uh, both are summed okay but i need to check different cost prices over here in this cases i need to go for do not summarize as soon as i do that the data is split across different cost prices against item quantity this one i do not want to make it as do not summarize let it be a total quantity okay now what this graph indicates to me is like this is a scatter chart typical scatter chart and also called as a bubble chart because each bubble represents a data point meaning like for the cost price 700 there are 1232 products has been sold so we can consider this doesn't have too much data points that is why i have a very less combination here so assume like you have a lot of options over that dot different dots over here this becomes one cluster and you have different dots over here. this becomes another cluster meaning like between 600 to 700 you have a lot of sales happening if you have your cost price um, um like 800 you have a lot of sales happening but whereas this point is an outlier because if you have a very less quantity very less quantities are being sold maybe they may consider it as a cheap product or you need to focus on that because all your products or quantity sold will be available between these 300 to 800 but one of the product is away from your uh, your usual population right so in in that place you can and for either it can be error or it can you need to take some corrective actions say for example cost price is 100 item quantity 19 is sold right so these kind of things you can able to analyze here you identifying a clusters this is not having any cluster now but assume you have a lot of data points here then it becomes one cluster here it becomes another cluster so this is the first point about this scatter chart now i can introduce this selling price over here so that my bubble size will increase so what it indicates so my for the cost price 900 there are 1145 products sold the total selling price is this so based on the selling price my bubble size also increase the size of the bubble indicates the more the selling price i mean to say the total 
is more here it is less 3150 compared to this so that's why the small bubble okay now another important concept i want to understand i mean include is legend once you have a legend based on the different categories let me increase the legend size uh, slightly so based on this legend you can also further understand it better like you you can I take first case accessories accessories is not going beyond more than 400 products whatever may be the reason so it is not going beyond that uh, group and also it is not going beyond more than 700 700 is the maximum cost price people are afford to buy the accessories and in this case it is the semi formal people are not buying beyond 600 because you can see 600 is the highest for semi formal whereas the formal case people are ready to buy even if the cost price is more that is thousand and interesting case over here is like casual wear there is no products less than 700 for us i mean they, this this naga garments is not selling anything less than 700 for casual wear so they can think of it's better to introduce some of the casual wear products because it is the highest selling quantity and even with this higher price like 600 700 and it is 800 and 900 so if they introduce lesser price for casual wears some of the quantities i mean products then the chances of getting the sales is more so these kind of analysis quickly they can find insights right everything is to analyze your data so between two numerical quantities it's not always tricky when you use a conventional bar chart or pie chart so this will give you an option to analyze better so what are some of the properties we can quickly check like um, we have a shapes instead of uh, circle or bubble you can use this uh, different shapes like square or triangle some other shapes as well and other properties are similar you can change the colors here these are some of the properties zoom slider is available for this visual so you can zoom and focus on certain points you only focus on here you can set it default option over here that is also possible so other properties are common across other visuals i'm going to explain about ribbon chart as you can see the ribbon chart uh, looks like this and what is this and when to use it let us check it out in our next slide so when to use a ribbon chart it's basically you can create a ribbon charts to visualize data and quickly discover which data category has the highest rank it in a glance when you see it over the period right in the chart when you're seeing which data category is the highest one so the chart will show always the highest one at the top that is what a ribbon chart is all about a ribbon charts are effective at showing a rank change so another reason is like during the period from one quarter to another quarter there will be a change in ranks right that also you can easily able to visualize over each time period what i'm trying to say about let's try to check it out here like over here this whatever is the top 113 right so which is always at the top that is what it is ranks highest ranks always at the top so here in this case 230 that becomes the highest now so at each period each point over a period whichever be the highest category of value that will appear first and also when you check this particular change or transition where you can see here this is being the lowest here right and you can able to see the transition it becomes a second now so like this transition you can easily identify in this chart that is what a ribbon chart is all about let us try to check it out how we can implement in power bi if you are new to this channel hit the subscribe button since 60 percentage of this channel viewers are not yet subscribed so that you can support my efforts let's go to power bi and you can see here 
uh, the data. This is typical uh, Naga store um, data that we have shared earlier in my previous videos and I will upload uh, this video as well. So what it contains, it contains sale date and item number, item name and the data. Now what we are going to do is like just go to the ribbon chart. Okay, let's try to view it to the whole view over here. And I want to see the item quantity, how much it has sold and across a different time frame. So I will put year and uh, year, I mean date column. I will remove the quarter and uh, day. Let's hope uh, to keep only at the month level. So viewing this one will give you only at the bar chart like look like i mean to say there is no category to view to differentiate see basically it says whichever category is the highest over the period so you do not have any category so it just shows your bar chart so in the legend area if you bring any of the category the first category i want to view is location as soon as you bring this um, location in the legend you can see the value over here right the difference and changes where you can see the value chennai which is having 230 and whereas here 205 and 207 during this period is highest right let us try to view the value why it's not appearing data label let me enable data label and filter out some of the data so that we can able to analyze much easier so let me focus only on um, 2019 then um, let me change some colors let me have um, you can change the properties so that's what I'm trying to explain it here so this seems to be little okay fine so what this ribbon chart says so always whichever is the top quantity right in 2000 march 19 march this category 230 is the top value highest value that will be in the uh, top portion highest ranking in 2019 april this particular value 207 that is bangalore is the highest value that becomes the first and you can see the transition right so if you highlight this particular between these two months if you highlight this point there is a change in rank that is one rank changed right rank change is equal to one uh, that is greater than symbol one from the bottom i'm reading and you can see it becomes in 2019 april it becomes one earlier in 2019 march bangalore is in the second rank this is in second rank now it moved to first rank so you can start two things which is highest at any given point of time and you can see the transition as well so this is what uh, this uh, uh, chart is all about now you can see here the rank change is two the last time we see the increase right rank is increased from the bangalore is increased from second place to first place here in this case you can see this is decrease two place here right rank change two from the one to third rank and this month you have highest rank as chennai this is what uh, this chart is all about so the categorical value you can be able to view either location i can put now um, use instead of category category wise different category name i mean uh, whether it's um, uh, accessories casual or when you put by category there is no much changes i mean it depends upon your business let us restore by location itself and some of the properties to highlight like these are the common properties you can change about just now we saw the legend i mean the data labels the legend is at the top this is fine and one of the two important properties i want to highlight zoom slider where when you have this one sometimes it will be very small changes you cannot be able to highlight which one it is so in those cases you can use this zoom slicer i will maximize this so that you can go here and navigate and keep the change you can check that uh, a value so this is one of the important property 
then another property is like uh, slicer ribbons right ribbons so here you can define the space how much space you want between uh, the categories so you can increase the space match uh, serious uh, color so here once you change this it will the look will be completely different you can increase the transparency if i keep uh, 80 percentage you can see um, not 80 percentage it is 80 now you can see the difference between the uh, each month you if the transparency is increased so usually it will be 20 or 25 maybe 30 will be better 30 is good and if you want to uh, add border you can add it so these are the two important properties ribbons and the zoom slider you can opt for in this visual waterfall chart which is the first video in the visuals with nax series let's check it out in this video what it is and when you need to use it so you can use this uh, waterfall chart when you have changes for your measures across different uh, times and series are different categories and if you're not getting what i mean let us check it in the demo while explaining it it will be very clear basically you want to audit major changes contributing to the total value and uh, like you are getting some total value and which category is making a huge amount right so those kind of things you can easily find out using this waterfall chart to plot your company's annual profit so mostly it is used in the financial uh, statements to show you the profit or net um, revenue or gross i mean mm, uh, it's like expenses to track how much expense happened whether uh, how much revenue you have got whether uh, how much you spent in taxes so mostly this chart is famous for uh, uh, financial world and to illustrate the beginning and ending headcount for years company your companies in a year for headcount analysis as well and finally like it is used to visualize how much money you make and spend each month and running balance for your account so it's like um, incoming and outgoing cash flow statements so these are the different purposes you will use uh, waterfall charts we are not going to cover all these scenarios i'm going to cover very simple scenarios and from the existing charts how you can build waterfall charts as well let us check it out in this video let's begin now we have a simple uh, example here first i will start with the uh, finance world like a uh, sales flow or cash flow where you need to generate a table like this where you have a revenue and expense taxes advertisement it can be account statement it is not a category here usually it will be accounts so while combining all these things into different categories and something which is uh, to be uh, expenses to be debited or i mean subtracted from your uh, balances then it should be denoted in negative then this order is used to provide you the order in which the data has to be displayed and this is to compare when you have a comparison between pre current year and previous year then this will be useful let us check it out how we can achieve this basically in the finance statements from the current year and previous year how much the revenue has been happened right that is what we usually compare let us check it out if you see here and uh, if you do not have a year right first we will begin with without having an year what happens now we have a, uh, this waterfall chart here and i'm going to demonstrate another example let us delete it for now so once you have a waterfall chart then the category goes to category like what you want to analyze in the x-axis and by which you want to analyze like different values over here so this is a revenue and you can see the expense how much it has happened and whichever is negative it will show it to you as um, 
a decrease value and when there is a positive figure it will consider as an increase value and the total will be from the uh, positive value sum it up of all these things combined together it will show it as a total value so this is your uh, net revenue for that year so this is to demonstrate if you are showing it for the one particular area you need to have all these things set up and this order column used to give your order in which it has to be displayed like over here like i have a category here and if you are not following my channel you might not understand this so just i'm showing it to you so for each category right uh, you need to set one order so this is for uh, one particular year right so you might have add one filter over here filter on this visual filtering for one particular year so this is fine and um, you can see the order in which it has to be displayed so click on this particular category and you have a column visual here that sort and the sort property of this category column should be order order in which it should be displayed otherwise it will not be in the order it will be in alphabetical or some confused order so this is fine so this is what a very simple example so that you can have a snapshot of it why it is useful is like when you have the same kind of information presented in the bar chart uh, like over here the way you can view it is slightly different you cannot understand which is increasing or decreasing with the different color formats right so let me show it to you axis and i'm putting the amount over here like this is the zero axis and it is just like showing um, uh, in um, kind of uh, negative filler figure but it is not giving me whether it's decreasing or increasing just showing the bars so that is why it is not so effective instead you need to use waterfall chart so this is one classic example and one more thing i want to make you understand is like when you have a category and you want to compare these uh, categories for different years right so how you can do it so make this uh, for different years you want to compare these two so put it down here and put the year over here let me remove this year from here there you go so now you can see from 2019-20 your revenue got increased okay in 2019 your revenue is uh, 3 million or um, 300 uh, 3000 thousands and whereas uh, for 2020 your revenue is uh, 4000 thousands so it is just like increasing 1 million value right so that is the comparison you can make and how much advertisement your amount you have spent in 2020 so this is how you need to compare it when you want to have a comparison of your um, uh, different categories so put your by which you want to compare is like uh, by year you want to compare your different categories so put your category in the breakdown and uh, the comparison factor should be in your category factor so this is the example i want to make you understand in similar way uh, you can able to demonstrate the head count so let me copy this one and put it over here at the bottom so that the formatting will be aligned let me remove all the meshes over here and have another example for headcount so same way headcount and you can put a month category here and i don't want this one let me put it in a month now you can see here there was uh, it is a half hourly report and you can have a view over here that on april you have uh, some uh, 5.5670 headcount on may there was a decrease in headcount there are 870 people are left and finally on um, september 
right at the end of September when you see this is the end and this is the end of September you have on total 5550 so this is the value you can able to analyze the uh, each month how many people has uh, left and how many people has newly joined so this is a combination of your newly joined as well as your whoever people left there is no point it is not saying like um, how many left so in the same month there will be some people who have uh, joined also so there is total uh, maybe around um, uh, 200 people joined or um, i mean this is this sum indicates the minus 870 indicates addition as well as decrease there is more people as who left the organization so like this at the end of the quarter i mean uh, the half a year how much headcount you have so you can see from this snapshot so the data how you need to populate for all these things that should match with this format whereas you see in the uh, that sales flow or the um, accounts um, department how much actuals you have spent right so this is actuals this is actuals you have spent on the during the year in case of headcount when you want to do such a graph this headcount inclusive of how many people left okay and your starting should be uh, having the overall value so these kind of things you need to ensure the, your data structure should be formatted either you can build it before or you need to derive it using a tax so either way you can do it so in order to project a waterfall chart it is not a simple way you can drag and drop some measures and um, you represent the value you need to manipulate some data before pointing to in this chart i mean to say manipulation in the sense you need to derive the data in the form that waterfall charts accepts that is what i want to make a point here okay this is a thing i have said that just to get the uh, feeling of increase or decrease right i have another typical scenario whether a waterfall chart can be created for some other purpose or automatically so here a typical example of uh, the um, clustered column chart where it shows each location wise the difference right i mean uh, each location wise yearly sales amount now i want to check the difference for hyderabad see 0.64 and 0.66 what is the difference what causes this increase i want to identify right that is the main agenda now when i right click you have option called analyze explain the increase so it is comparing the previous year and current year and says explain the increase if you click on this analyze explain the decrease so always it is previous and the current years value current point it consider it is a data point can be anything so uh, let us go here and click on this option explain the increase i clicked on hyderabad so now you can see it is generating me one of the waterfall chart let us try to add this visual in this uh, bar and try to compare it so you can see in 2016 hyderabad 643k is the total amount whereas in 2017 65510 out of which the particular product named jeans denim has increased to 55 percentage right sales amount change whereas other products like wallet everything got declined so from this snapshot just it's not focusing on particular hyderabad it's got increased uh, 0.2 million so we will uh, focus on hyderabad in that narrowing down to details like by product this product is giving more profit than others so in hyderabad this is performing very well in a couple of clicks you can be able to identify 
Similarly, you can click on it. There are other factors that influences this increase. One of the factor is the product and other thing is like uh, each and individual amount like 750 is the cost right so we will not consider it and this is by bill this is not useful and total quantity you can see here this is uh, i think it's a quarter each quarter which quarter so in the third quarter it is not only uh, the jeans um, denim uh, other factors influencing is like in which quarter like um, in third quarter there is an increase in first and second and fourth quarter there is a decrease only right and also this jeans denim comes in the casual wear it is comes as uh, other category so the this particular option will give you all the other parameters influencing this increase it is easily able to identify the waterfall chart is the key factor to identify it that is what i want to make so these kind of analysis you can make using waterfall chart before getting into the today's topic if you're a regular viewer who is not yet subscribed to our channel please subscribe and enable notification because YouTube statistics shows that 70% of the viewers of analytics with Nax is unsubscribed viewers. So your subscription will give us motivation for the work we do. Also, like and uh, share the content if you feel it's worth watching. Let's get into the topic. So funnel chart basically like um, it shows the values across multiple stages in a process right so as you can see in the diagram uh, below it contains different stages and you will have like at the end you will have a smaller uh, amount or uh, smaller count compared to the initial stage so it will look like a funnel your data will look like a funnel so in those cases and you will have different stages in each stages it will be filtered out so such a data can be viewed in funnel chart so that is what a definition so funnel chart shows values across multiple stages in a process so it can be any process one such a process is called sales like um, you will have a lead generation there will be 500 people um, you will get as a list right and you will quantify them or qualify them like uh, out of 500 200 are qualified lead because other people no need to focus on then they become a prospect from 200 people 100 people become a prospect and some of them will sign the contract and final stage it will be one or two or it can be 10 so it's like from the 500 only two to five people will close the contract right so this is the uh, use of the flow in different stages you want to see the data and it is like when when you, you need to use like when the number of items in the first stage is expected to be greater than the number of items in the final stage right so as i mentioned before in the diagram and it is also to track the progress and success of click through advertisement and marketing campaigns see uh, these are the different uh, applications where you can use it right so when you go to the website um, like um, you are uh, clicking on the uh, marketing or ad website and how many people are really by that so clicking is not making you uh, profit right only once they buy it then they become a profit so this tracking of process can also be using funnel chart and today we are going to see about a recruitment process how a funnel chart can be used to track the recruitment process let us check it out in this video let's begin now i am in power bi where um, uh, I need to get the data and I have the data in Excel. Let us get this one. And I also will explain how this data should look like so that we will get a proper data in uh, while viewing this funnel chart. I'll go with this, the history, and I will explain the data, how it 
is uh, looking over here assume there are 150 candidates here right they become a new application and out of uh, 150 there will be like um, some of them is qualified for the interview and then they will be uh, clearing the interview and offer letter will be released then finally they join the organization so these are the different stages involved let us try to see the data first now you can see here there are new applications and few of them are shortlisted and you can see interview cleared right so from the shortlisted candidate some of them are cleared the interview and offer is ready for some and there are five people who joined the organization so i have just have a simple data like this okay and also you can see the application date or whenever the status changes you have a date here so with this uh, data we will try to uh, design our dashboard let us make our template just change the background so what chart i'm going to do funnel click on this funnel chart then get into here so it it doesn't require any uh, simple account here i mean we want count so you can go for it candidate id the count over here then what you want so this group is nothing but your different stages right so stages are here in, in my case it is status so there you go now you can clearly see from this data like out of 150 applicants 58 are shortlisted and 28 people are cleared the interview and 14 offered um, i mean offered letter got released five of them are joined organization so now we just uh, will try to increase the size so that uh, everyone can able to see it clearly let me make it bold and then make the data color slightly some rich blue in color data labels 210 okay this is fine so this properties I have changed now from this how you can able to see here is like only 3.3 percentage of um, 100 percentage right this total is uh, 100 percentage has joined the organization but your recruitment process you target you want to recruit for 10 people okay it can be your target now five people got recruited in your organization then remaining five has to come from here right i mean offer editor got released maybe there might be a possibility like um, uh, some of them get rejected the you need to check on it so the t number 10 i said for assumption it should be more than 15 right um so only 15 people um uh, you need to recruit so that you release 14 people here so five people joined so remaining people you need to ensure they are joining and one important aspect how you need to analyze here is like now the percentage contribution so here you if you highlight it you can see percentage of first first means this first stage then previous is from 14 that is from 14 there is um, 5 is 35 percentage okay so the 35 percentage of uh, people who got offer has joined the organization right that is how you need to see this data now even you can see here percentage of first so this is the first stage and this is the previous stage so first and previous are same here you can see easily like 28 is uh, 28 is 18 percentage of first from 150 28 is 18 percentage and from uh, 58 it is 48.28 percentage so each stage you can able to analyze uh, like how much people you're really getting assume it is a sales lead right as i said in the before an example 500 leads has came here in the first stage finally we have signed for only five people or ten people from 500 leads only five to ten people are signing the contract which means five means one percentage or uh, ten means two percentage from 500 people so you can see how much efforts you are putting in and how much leads you need to generate in order to get the target right so say for example in order to sign um like uh, 20 contracts in this month you need to generate a lead of 
around 1500 because from 500 you can able to generate 5 to 10 so similarly you can able to analyze so this is what uh, this funnel chart is all about you need to track the uh, different stages and each stage how much percentage it is contributed either you can use this count or sales amount depends upon your need one important aspect among the data as i said before in all the visuals you need to have your data in a such a way like it suits your requirement now instead of having this history right here you can see i have 150 applicants that is from 1 to 150 okay the new application from this 150 if they are shortlisted i have inserted a new record so let us try to get um, one particular candidate candidate like uh, 34 okay now you can see here this 34 uh, has a new application on january 1st he got shortlisted and he got interview cleared on 4th and offer released on 6th and 11th he joined the organization these are the different stages yes for each stage i have one entry for this candidate so then only you can able to view this data properly right so from 150 five got offer letter and this one is a part of each stage right so this record this particular candidate is representing each stage okay every stage has one entry that is what it meaning but most of the time what happens there won't be different records for each stages people will keep updating the status right you need to find a way to update to track the history okay that is what i'm saying if you do not have a history maintained okay what will happen so i have a data for that let us try to pull that data from the Excel. So this is uh, data with uh, update, right? You are not tracking the different stages in each record. You have only one record per candidate and you are trying to make the funnel chart how it will look like so let us try to pull the funnel chart once again here then use this update table status then funnel chart please funnel chart and the candidate id values should be here that is count okay now you can see here um whoever joined the organization is fine but you can see because of the status updated for these um, five records from offer release to joined organization right so you you see the conflict here so addition of these two will give you offer release so there are 14 members offer release but you are not maintaining the history what i'm trying to say let us try to get the uh, whoever got the offer okay this both are different data sets so forget about joint organization okay i mean offer released not okay it should be joint organization so candidate 60 is got offer released okay now i'm removing the filters here so let me filter candidate 60 here so what happened so he doesn't have five records here instead he what he happened is like well, initially he uh, applied for a job then he got shortlisted so status are being updated over here again and again okay in so once you have only one record uh, per candidate then you you cannot have a proper comparison out of um, how many people has uh, got shortlisted so you need to ensure it is properly uh, maintained a history right so that is what I'm saying. This will not be useful in those cases. And uh, one more important property I can show here is like um, when you have a conversion rate label, like over here, uh, you can uh, choose uh, no uh, the data labels here. So data labels uh, like you what you want to show here, like you can see data value that is five that is percentage of first how much percentage from the total right that you can see so this will give you a proper 
um, value okay and you can hide this particular conversation i mean conversation rate level so this this is how you can able to view the data properly i hope you like this video and hit the thumbs up button and comment below for queries do remember that data is your asset welcome to analytics with nax in this video we're going to see about what is stream map and when to use it in the visuals with nax series if you so when to use it basically you need to display large amounts of hierarchical data and which is not effectively shown in the bar chart using a bar chart you can able to display a different uh, hierarchical data and you can drill down right but when the bar chart is not effective for your hierarchical data then you can go for it and to show the pattern of distribution of the measure across each level of categories in the hierarchy it can be a hierarchy or may not be only for the categorical values so basically to demonstrate the distribution between the categories that is the main objective of this visual and to show the attributes using size and the color coding so a lot of visuals require to show the distributions based on the size and color coding in our previous video also we have seen the bubble chart which shows the size as when the greater the size meaning like it is the higher the value similarly we can uh, show the attributes in this uh, tree map using the size and the color coding and the final pattern is like i mean when you can uh, use it like to spot patterns are uh, outliers most important contributors and exceptions basically like when you see the tree map the higher the contributor of a particular member that will be displayed at the left most the lower contribution will be shown at the bottom right corner so these are the things you can able to analyze using a tree map let's try to jump into a demo and understand it better i am in power bi now and as usual we have our naga garments uh, data those who are following this channel they are familiar with this data set which is nothing but a sale date receipt number i mean uh, th this is like a, just a garments data and they are have he is running the garment business owner running the shop in three different locations and he is selling some products which is having some categories like over here accessories casual wear formal and these are the different products he is selling so basically like uh, the tree map first things first so let us try to uh, get the uh, tree map over here where it is it is tree map over here click on it and let us try to expand it and we will add the categorical name the group okay so when you click on it as soon as you click on it it will automatically go to the group area you can see it here then i want to analyze the sales amount that is my item amount in this case so as soon as you click on it you can see here easily you can understand it how much proportion or distribution the casual wear has in this particular rectangle box more than 50 percentage is contributed by casual wear that is what it means even you can see the semi formal formal and accessories being the least so this is the typical tree kind of uh, tree map visual which easily uh, 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 enable us to analyze which item in the category has the most value in it right so in this case it's a casual wear and also it is used to find the least it is however you want to analyze an important factor people how analyze it like instead of uh, analyzing in a correct way they used to put it here right the categorical or hierarchical value when i put hierarchical value over here what happens is still the drill down facility is available now we have a casual wear at the category name item name once we drill down here right the casual wear maybe i will go one level down from the casual wear when i click on it whatever in the casual wear they can able to analyze 
but they cannot compare the items between the categories what i'm trying to say so once you have the stream map people need to put this underneath the sub level in the details so that within this casual wear category what are the sub items right the sub products will be displayed as a split within this category even you can see the under semi formal that category will be appearing at the top that is group and the each item the details will be appearing the labels will be appearing at the bottom so now within each category you can able to compare the results so now you can see the jeans zara is similar to semi formal so almost same proportion whereas among all the items the jeans levis is the highest let me try to increase some property here so that it will be uh, better understandable so first thing is uh, category i can increase the size so i can make it as little bold so that is the category and also i can change some of the colors this color I don't like let us go for light blue now it's somewhat better now this is how you need to analyze the hierarchical data as i mentioned uh, before mostly people either you can analyze without this uh, hierarchy like category name item name either you can use only with this or you can include the item name as well so that it will have a split and you can compare the different hierarchy levels in the same shot based on the different distributions it has come from so this is what it is now another important factor here in the casual wear jeans lega is the least in the accessories chain is the least formal shirt is the least in semi formal shirt piece the whichever is the left most i mean right most corner it is the least the left most top corner will be the highest value so this is how you need to see this visual and the properties we just now see we can change the colors we can uh, change the category color values then add the data labels if you require like uh, what is the actual value you can add it over here right so other properties are common across other visuals you can explore it come to analytics with nax in this video we are going to see about the difference between filters and slicers we are all know like filters and slicers solves the same purpose used to filter the report but using the correct the filters or whether you you need to use slicers make your reporting very performant efficient and it based on the different business needs you need to choose particular option we will clarify in this video which one to use we are in power bi now and before knowing the difference between uh, slicers and filters i just want to highlight to uh, you may aware like all the power bi reports are interactive like when i want to see for 2016 when you click on it you can see it is highlighted like i mean this is uh, uh, the value for highlighted that is 2016 and you can still able to do the interactivity like um, once you click on it it should filter it so in these cases already you are are like interactive and it will filter the data so once you have these members in your visuals no need to have additional slicer here for the year so that is the thumb point i want to make so instead what you can do is you just go to the uh, format click on this uh, visual go to the format edit interaction and set the interactivity to filters right so when you click on it it will filter instead of highlighting so this is the point i want to make now let's move on to the actual difference between the slicers and filters so slicers are one of the visuals that is the first point i want to make so once you have this one so as i pointed out before you should not have any members instead you can use the interaction so now we can go for uh, location as the filter so once you have this you can see the value here let me increase the size so that it will be easy for everyone to understand so 
once you have this either you can choose it as a checklist or the drop down so drop down will be the performant efficient and you can choose that one and once you have this you have the ability to choose right this is the way you design the slices but what about the filters filters for this particular page so filters for this page and filter i mean this particular um, uh, uh, slices solves the same purpose now you can see here filter for this page even you can set this uh, location in this page level itself both returns the same value when you want to choose from bangalore you can choose it so it will filter either from here or from here then what is the exact difference as i said before it is the same difference like this location slicer should not filter the order type in those cases you need to go for slices so what i'm trying to say here is this filter on this page will filter entire page okay it will not allow for you to set the interaction whereas this slicer will set you the interaction so now i will say like once you click on the location this order quantity should not change so go to here edit interaction then set it to none so now you can see 2036 when you click on the bangalore i mean we need to reset it here so when you click on bangalore it will not return anything it is same whereas when you click on bangalore here it will reduce to bangalore data so this is the most important thing you need to understand so you want some kind of uh, twist or i mean to say certain visuals should not filter for your uh, filtration i mean certain visuals should not uh, apply your filtration then you go for slices if not then you can go for it another reason people go for it right they don't like the filter slices uh, this pane they want to design everything within this dashboard itself so and this filter pane may not be enabled or it cannot be embedded in the dashboard application when you are doing embed the people used to embed only this page not the filter pin so in those cases everything to be designed in the page itself so for these two reasons you need to choose the slices then another important aspect of um, choosing between uh, slices and the filter is like you can use um, something called filter on pages right so when particular filter should be applied across all the pages right then you can go for it but sometimes what happens this particular filter should be applied to three pages when you choose bangalore it should also navigate to when you go to this page that filter should be navigating to these uh, pages as well right so in those cases filter on all pages will not work because it filters all the pages but your requirement is to filter only certain pages so at that time your slices will be helpful which option is used at that time is called sync slices let us go and see the sync slices so what it says is like let me copy the slicer and put it here in the another page um maybe over here this will be fine i will just make it short and put it here yeah it's it's over here right it's asking me whether to sync this visual whatever you filter in the page one or here that will be synced either way either you can filter from here and move to other pages it will be synced right so you sync it so in this way you can sync the slicer now i chosen chennai now when you go to here the another page it will automatically sync to chennai right so these kind of behaviors if you want you need to go for slicers the filters won't be helpful so i hope uh, these are the 
two important aspects when you need to choose uh, string, uh, slices or filters and uh, also i want to highlight another important aspect when this filter will be useful is like filter on this visual this is very really cool feature like um, this filter is applicable only to this visual right so i want the item quantity only in this particular product so i can go and drop it so i want only the chain quantity how much it is sold so i can keep that one so it will not be applicable for any other visual it is applicable this filter applicable only to this visual this is not possible using the slices so these are the some of the things you need to consider which one suits best for your business needs filas chiclet slicer in power bi in the visuals with nag series what is this visual is all about when to use it so this is uh, used when like uh, in our existing slicer you cannot able to customize much right so you the in those cases you can go for it in the existing slicer you cannot include the images so if you want to include images in your slicer then you can go for chiclet slicer basically the chiclet slicer comes with more customizable option for you in those cases you can go for it that is what i am trying to explain let's try to check it out in power bi how this uh, visual will be useful so we are in power bi as i said before this is designed using the slicer here where we get the default option over here as vertical or horizontal when it is vertical and you have um, our slicer header enabled either you can choose the drop down or the you can choose the uh, another option as list so in your case of list it will display over here and some people they prefer to have a list and then they will make it as uh, horizontal over here um i think um here right in this option so this is preferable so when they have such options over here when they minimize it we cannot customize this one much what i'm trying to say is i want this visual to be present like this and i need uh, five rows and two columns May why i need because i want to fit it over here so i need in uh, five columns and two rows so whatever are in five rows two columns so like that i want to fit it but it will not fit based on our need over here it is more uh, difficult to align it because based on the um, uh, adjustment we make here this will dynamically change so there is no more customization over here so that comes as chiclet slicer which is nothing but a custom visual so we can how to import it that most of them however whether you can go by get more visual by logging into power bi uh, app store or you can download this visual pre um, pre to that and you can upload it using here i upload it here so i don't want to uh, waste your time in demonstrating that so let us quickly drag and drop the chick slicer here and i will delete this one so here what i want i want to use the category or item name that is different products over here as soon as you click it here by default it is also showing the in a three columns and four rows so as you can see this gives you like a chiclet like structure right and this is most of them are customizable the size and everything now i as i said before one of the coolest feature is you can define how many rows you want let us say i need it in uh, two columns and different rows right so you go here to general i need it in two columns and i will say um, some 20 rows or 10 rows whatever maybe okay you need to define it properly so what happened i think we need to mention it like this three columns are um, five rows okay 
and I can say three rows right so because how many products you have based on that you need to mention it because otherwise it will skip that is why it has uh, totally we have 10 products so you need to mention how many columns first then it has to fit here over here if you mention five rows then it will confuse right so based on that you need to mention properly i hope these are not uh, going to increase in rapidly so let us stick to this so this is what i'm saying so i need it in uh, if i want uh, in two columns as i mentioned i need to mention five over here so this is one of the important concept i want to highlight then coming to uh, the other features over here like you can increase the uh, text and uh, you can have the uh, color increased everything together and um, you can adjust the other uh, things over here right in a chiclet what you need is like uh, different colors once you click on it what should be the color once you mouse over right so here I will say red you can see the difference appearing over here when you select certain things like I have selected this what color it should be it should be black or white so these are some of the properties you can always uh, change it over here right so this is more uh, like um, customizing your slicer giving more power to your slicer visual and another important concept I want to highlight is like for each item you want to display as some images like um, most of the internet uh, in internet you might have seen some vehicles like uh, BMW or some vehicles used as a slices right so similarly you for each item you have your own images then you can link it over here this is another important feature I do not have um, any uh, much image over here so that's why um, I had a single image so I have configured over here now let us try to see here some of the properties for the image click on the slicer then hold on so go here and images and this is more or less customizable I want to show only 20 percentage of that uh, image I mean in over here then see as soon as you add an image you cannot fit it very small uh, always it is recommended if you have an image here then it should be expanded so you should keep the images like that so in this case I would like to prefer I will change it to five columns and two rows so you can keep it like this at the top and this images you can uh, customize it based on different URLs you are given if you want to increase 80 percentage so entire image will occupy 80 percentage remaining 20 will be split so if you want to have it as a round or different shapes you can make it over here now when you click on it the entire report filtered for that particular image it's uh, it behaves as a slicer along with other functionalities like so you can have multiple selections as well by pressing the control or if you you can set those properties over here it is a default property for any slices i hope you understand about the chiclet slicer when you want to make your report um, with some other more customizable slicer like with images and some selection properties and different colors then you can go for this chiclet slicer visual and a field map we are in power bi and i have a simple data set where i have a city wise data for each city what is the latitude longitude and in which country it belongs to and for your information this is only for the India country I mean these are the different states uh, different cities in the India and what are the states corresponding to those cities and what is the population of it so this is very simple data set based on that uh, I'm trying to demonstrate the maps and in your case you can 
always have this as a link like you if, uh, if this is considered as a dimension this can be connected to your fact tables and you can analyze any measures in the fact table for simplicity for understanding i'm using the population as a measure for this entire video now let's try to understand this like a map visual now we have this map visual click on this and you can drag and drop you can do it um, completely so that the map visual usually cannot be a small visuals because it will not uh, suits you well so just create uh, at least half of the page you should have it now once you have this uh, let me try to explain these fields location legend latitude and longitude and we will start with location then i will tell you where, at what scenarios you will uh, go for latitude and longitude right so first let us try to drop the city over here the city here and then what we are going to see basically we will see the how much is the population based on different size so we can zoom in to a particular uh, place here in india so these are the different cities with different population so now you can see chennai has um, around uh, more than uh, 11 million um, population so it, it will be uh, more than that right so it, it depends upon uh, what, what you see here so based on the population your bubbles will change when you remove it you can see the different plots so it, it indicates each location you have uh, some data here i mean to say the data information are plotted here the city names are plotted but you need to view in different um, perspective right it's not a different perspective uh, what is the volume of data that you will indicate as a measure you want to view each city so bigger the size of this uh, bubble indicates uh, the more the population is okay and this is the thing and i want to mention what when you will use uh, latitude and uh, longitude over here so now you can see here in the map uh, you have uh, something like uh, some particular uh, city that is sanai it is uh, available in japan so if you have uh, mapping like this right when you map a city in this particular location if a particular city is uh, available in different uh, locations the power bi or any maps will confuse it belongs to which country for that only if you specify latitude and longitude right then that will be much better now you can see there is no way it is pointed in any country in japan now everything is mapped correctly inside india so that is why your uh, latitude and longitude works better so you need to f find a way to get this one okay i will share this um, information file you may use if your data is at the city level now this is fine and what about the legend so legend is like you find a di different uh, colors for it right so for that for each state wise i want to split this colors so you can use uh, the state over here now you can see everything belongs to uh, tamil Nadu will be in a purple color and something in karnataka it will be blue and something over in the um, madhya pradesh it will be in orange so different color shades you can give so these are the different uh, fields you can able to utilize to view it in different um, perspective so this is the core uh, logic behind it so once you have latitude angle better if you have location then you need to be more careful now some of the properties you can see over here is like uh, one of the important property i want to uh, show here is like map styles so now you can change this map style to aerial that is uh, night uh, vision and um, dark mode right so these are the different themes you usually uh, you can switch between these maps uh, typically 
like uh, this light visual will be most preferable uh, personal it's my personal opinion this one okay the gray scale is uh, top most it, it looks very neat and the color wise and you can see the values over here right so that is what uh, this particular map style is and then you can explore other options to decrease or increase these bubbles and um, you can have uh, auto zoom future zoom buttons right so you can have these ones whether you need it or not so these are the properties you can go through it and each and everything you can go through and uh, change the properties and check it out so this is about uh, basic uh, map visual let us try to explore the another uh, map that is filled map let me duplicate it so i will remove this one and the where is this fill map available you can see over here so typically this uh, filled map is used when to show the differentiation some uh, uh, consider the covid situation different states what is the severity right uh, in some states the covid uh, affection is more and some state it is uh, less so lesser the numbers you need to show uh, the colors slightly light colors if more the covid uh, cases you need to show the dark colors so those kind of shots you will um, use to view it in the film maps for that now instead of showing this one at the city level you can use the states okay this is where you will use it states right now you can see here there are uh, only in india as i said before so only few states have this uh, data that is tamil nadu kerala and um, something in telangana and madhya pradesh right now what you can see here is like you need to show the values over here the state wise what values you need to show right so for this you can do the some kind of uh, saturation L let us try to pull this uh, tooltip value here so that you can see what value is appearing now you can slightly change this one to data colors default it will be like this now you can change the colors of this as i said before if the cases are population is less you will show green right if the population is more in our case it's a population but i whatever examples i gave it's number of uh, active cases now when i say like this as soon as you see here the lighter the color the lesser the population you see the telangana is least population so you have a lighter color and whereas you have uh, uttar pradesh you have a uh, more population you have red in color so there is no need of showing this population also even without population measure you can able to differentiate the colors here the tamil nadu are based on the color saturation so only one field with this color um, property will do for this graph so in order to view such a graphs uh, such a data you can use this one so another uh, thing instead of uh, coloring uh, what you can do is people used to see this one in a legends right the, in the same place legend you can show it like this to differentiate uh, different states here so in each state you need to have some data so that you can plot it in different uh, values so it will show only the graphs here in order to show the value or we'll put it in a tooltip so tooltip will give you the extra information so this is just a filled map use it to give some color saturations based on the certain measures that is the main purpose of this fill map and in addition you can have this tooltip to view what is the value of belongs to it i hope uh, this is about uh, two basic uh, charts or uh, maps that is map and uh, filled map and um, we will try to explore other maps in our upcoming videos about of get chart it's used to track uh, the any kpi measures key measures against your goal right so that is what the get chart is all about and um, before getting into what are other reasons you can see 
If you are new to this channel, hit the subscribe button as the YouTube chat says 60% of this uh, channel is not yet subscribed. That will definitely motivate us to do more. With this note, let's begin. So when to use, as I said, it's used to show the progress towards the goal, represent a percentile measure like a KPI. So you have a KPI, you want to show it in percentile value show the health of single measure so as soon as you see this uh, uh, get shot you can see whether it's good or bad or poor right so display information you can quickly scan and understand so as soon as you see it it indicates the you can achieve the goal or it's progressing quick so that is what a get shot within a, uh, as soon as you see it you will understand what is the status of that KPI. With this note, let us try to jump into a demo. Now, I am in Power BI. As we are aware of, about this um, Naga government's sales data, we have a sales date and we have a location, three locations and different category name. I have a target sales. So this is improperly built model. If most of the people are doing like this, if they have a data like this, they need to do uh like this okay and then i will try to explain how you properly build your target sales in a proper modeling that will be really quick i will show it and um, now with improper modeling um, like you have this data where you will have a different uh, sales for each product in each day right each day you have different product sales in different uh, locations this is the granularity of the data now the user sets the target at the monthly level okay the month level target but what happens for each row he has put 200000 so but it is not actually the day wise target but he has you don't know where to have this target data then what happened is like he put it in the same table with monthly level target for each location so this is monthly level target for a location so that is what the user set here so you need to in this case the report should be built at the monthly level at least the filters should appear for the monthly level otherwise the data won't be meaningful the target data so now let's try to use the get chart now we have get chart now you can see here in order to show this value you need to drag and drop what value you want to track the progress then the target value here in this case it's going to be sales amount or item amount item amount is your uh, the value you want to track and the target sales the the target sales it is a target value okay and the important thing to note here is by default it will be sum as i said before for each row it will have a data if you want to see the it will be summed up the total value is your target now so assume you have thousand rows thousand into two hundred thousand so that should not be the case so you need to set to maximum this is your first step when you have uh, data like this once you set this you, now you can see here the target becomes here but this sales is not for the monthly so what you need to do you need to make it properly like um, you need to have a filters over here right let's put the filters here using the sales state hierarchy let me increase the size a little bit so that you can see it properly okay now in this i want to track right on february and as i said before this is for the each location wise sales so i will try to filter the data for a location i will have a visual level filter here version it now this is the one so like this you need to filter the data if you improperly design your um, data right uh, i mean to say like you need to set the maximum instead of the aggregation default aggregation so when you touch this uh, wish well you are setting the target as maximum because there is no granularity you define so you need to set the maximum here and this is what and always you need to filter any particular month to track the status and this is for the location right so each location you have 
the data here even you can mention based on if uh, for different location you can mention different values um, how you can easily do it i will show it to you so first uh, i will complete this uh, get start part now you can see here this tracking the process like now it's almost uh, 20th of um, june or 25th of june so in 25th of june uh i'm sorry so now it's in february right now you are seeing on february assume we are in february 2020 and uh at almost you are uh, at the 25th of february so you are not going to anyway achieve this target because almost uh, halfway through it is from 200k target you achieved only uh, 60 percentage uh, not even 60 so uh, 55 or 58 percentage here so anyway in another five days you're going to not going to reach so in this case you have can be able to step in like you can give a offers or some discounts so that it will not have any loss for you but you need to set a target goal you can reach so uh, in a glance you can be able to decide what you should do now right so in this way you can uh, arrange it now how you can view for different um, uh, location sales just copy and paste here okay now instead of this you choose bangalore this is fine and take this guy and put it again choose um hyderabad let's see what happened here target sales some target sales i hope um, the data is uh, very less here let's try to check for another month okay i hope the data is not properly built for those months so basically when you see here uh, this is for september 2019 so you are setting the target for different uh, locations uh, it will be in the same table then you can be able to view it here how much you have received out during that month so you, when you filter by the months so this is what but now you want to set the target for each location differently how you can do now for that i have a model here i mean i have a simple data over here the table which contains a target table okay uh, i need to rename it so location and target in this table i have chennai this is the target this can be a monthly target you can be able to change it now go to this tab and instead of using this particular um uh, target right target sales from the same table you can use this target right so let us try to copy these three okay now i'll put it over here right then instead of this target okay and location is should not be a filter from data table i'm removing the uh, location filter from the data table instead i need to use a table that i've used here so put it over here then use bangalore then <clears throat> here it's chennai i think chennai so here use the location chennai okay and this target should be replaced by this target okay again you can put some over here i didn't properly designed it now this location should be used by here and it is bangalore again you replace this one you can put this target here some okay then again you can use this one location here hyderabad then the target should be not from the data table it should be from the target table i put some over here now you can see you can set the different um, targets over here here even you have a single table obviously uh, like in a data table itself if you have a uh, different targets over here uh, instead of having for each location wise if you set the target and doing max will give you different target but for each location you need to set different targets here 
you can define it in a table and it is very easy to customize right now you have like for chennai it's 190k and for uh, bangalore is 180k and for hyderabad 200k so now you can easily track and easily customizable so here you can see 190k 180k 200k is your target so this way you can able to do the more customization of your cat shot this is the one of the thing the properly uh, building the model and another example you will ask me like um, how about setting the targets at month level say for example on chennai march uh, 2020 i need this on chennai April 2020, I need different targets. So each month wise, I need to define the targets, then how I, could, I should design. So I'm not going to do that right now. Instead, I will um, show you how you need to design your model uh, over here. And uh, just use uh, some diagram here. So use like this is your sales table. Like here you have a sales fact, okay? Let's name it as sales fact then you have a location dimension okay location dimension location dimension then you design your date dimension right now in our just now we have seen that you do not have any date dimension so design like this again you need to have one uh, target table right target set table target fact you can say target fact okay in this table you should have location and month instead of date you should have a month then the target so as we seen in our current example we have a location and target if you want to define the uh, targets at the month level right you need to define both right so now how you need to relate you need to link it like this in your model then again link it so in this way if you design it you can define the uh, targets for each location or any other category of uh, values and then you can relate this is how you need to properly design we will discuss more about the designing principles but this is about the get shot let's um, look at some of the properties you can set finally like you have a gauge axis uh, it's not so important and you can use this data colors uh, to fill it so obviously when it's progress it's better to put it in some green kind of stuffs so in that way you can uh, able to track it then target can be a red so this has the important property and this value is nothing but the call out value you can enable or disable it right so this is you can do it then these are the labels the minimum and maximum so data labels you can disable it most of the time when you have some maximum value for you to define then in that case use this one otherwise you can remove it then other things are uh, common properties shadow backgrounds uh, all other things are um, common to all other visuals KPI visual in the visuals with NAC series. Without wasting time, let's begin our today's video. And before seeing when to use KPI, what is KPI? So KPI stands for Key Performance Indicator that is used to track your key business measures against certain goal. So that is a quick definition of it. With this note, let us try to see. To measure progress, simple as that. So when to use it? In order to measure some progress of your um, key performance business metrics, use KPI. So in order to answer, what am I ahead or behind on, right? So whether you are ahead of your target or behind your target. That is what you come to know when you use a KPI. To measure distance to a goal, say for example, you set a goal as uh, 200 uh, thousands, but now you are in 50 thousands. So it, it seems like you need to work hard towards that goal, right? So that is why you can use a KPL to track how far ahead or behind you the actual goal. So for these reasons, you go for a KPI. As I said before, KPI visual is for a specific measure 
and the intention of KPI is to help evaluate the current value and the status of a metric against defined target. So there are different definitions for KPI and when to use it, all those things. In simpler term, it is used to measure the progress of your key metrics against a goal. That's it. With this note, let's jump into Power BI. Now, today's topic, uh, let's see the data first. So those who are following my channel, they are familiar with this data set, the Naga Commons data set. I have a column here, ignore about this. And whereas I have another table called table and location wise quarterly target. Okay. So for as the name indicates quarterly target, so we are going to track the KPI for uh, sales amount for quarterly, every quarter. That's what we are going to do. So I have a year and a quarter and month um, filter here and location, different location since I have okay uh, to track the uh, KPI for each locations, right? So I can use, I can switch between the filters. So let me use this KPI first, KPI visual. What are the three mandatory fields here? Indicator, trend axis and target goal. First thing is first, let us try to put the indicator, which is the key measure you want to track. Item amount. Then well, let us go for target, target goals, this one, and trend axis. This is another important aspect of it. Like um, whatever the granularity the target is defined, same granularity you need to use that will gives you a proper trend. Like what I'm trying to say is like, I, I will come to that later, but for now, just use that uh, quarterly target means use the quarterly trend here. So you can see the trend of different quarters for um, all the different locations across different period. So I filtered 2019 here and this is the total goal and irrespective of the location. As soon as I press uh, Bangalore, uh, the value indicates for which quarter right so this is always the value of this kpi always at the latest quarter you can see when i choose 2019 it filters the four quarters you can see here quarter one quarter two quarter four as soon as i uncheck it you can see the value for quarter three is appeared here right how can i know let me copy it and put it in a table for your understanding so that you can get what i'm trying to say let me increase the value slightly so that you can see it very clear okay now you can see here uh, i have chosen only three quarters so the the trend of these three quarters is like declining why because the first quarter is 29550 that is top and the second quarter 282 that is at here and the third quarter is 2730 so everything is declining so it comes declining here as soon as i press quarter four right you can see here again it is declining but the entire graph turns to be a red here I mean the value also red because the quarter four value is two four six hundred, which is compared against your goal. Okay, so always it is not when you choose two thousand nineteen. The entire data is summed up. So in this, whatever be the in the trend axis in this chart, you have a trend axis. Take the latest value and compare it with your goal. So two four six hundred is compared with two seven zero zero, and then your result comes here so it is less than this goal and it is 8.85 percentage as well that is what it is appearing so this is what i said this is so important what happens when you use month level here let me use this one now you can see it is showing the in quarter four the last month data is um, October, now December. December data is 29750. So that value is displayed against your goal. So you are setting the target at quarter level and the trend axis, if you use month, that will always give you a wrong result. So that is what I said. This trend axis is so important with your target granularity. What level you are setting the um, your target and how you can view this. This is the point I want to highlight here. and. One last thing about some of the properties. So this trend axis, you can always switch it off, but this is the purpose you had this trend. So let us skip this one. In the goal, uh, you can um, 
choose the distance that is percentage how much percentage you are far and uh, behind right so you can switch it on or off even uh, you can set the goal off you can only have that percentage difference so distance and goal you can switch it over here then color coding one of the important aspect um, is like as i said in the first example uh, like high is good meaning like the sales amount you are setting the value 2700 if it is more more than 270 uh, if it comes at 280000s then it is very good so higher the better in some cases low is better meaning like uh, defect ratios so you are setting the target as uh, 20 20 defects you should not get in this month but you are raising only 5 or 10 defects then in that case it is green meaning like if the defect is less than your threshold limit then it is good so low is good so if it exceeds 20 20 defect is your target but you it exceeds 20 then it becomes red so sometimes it is lower is good sometimes it is high is good so which direction you want in our case it is high is good let us go for it so it becomes red here in other cases as i mentioned in the defect example it should be low as good so these are the two different three different properties you can um, use which is very effective and other properties are common across other visuals decomposition tree as you can see here this visual used to analyze a particular measure against different dimension in in a nutshell this is the definition let us try to understand more about this visual and what are the uh, capabilities it can give it to you so when to use it so usually it is used to visualize data across multiple dimension you have a measure you want to analyze self servicing analysis right using different dimension then you can go for it it automatically aggregates data and enables drilling down into your dimension in any order this is very important when you create a bar chart or pie chart you can drill down to a specific order that you have already defined but this visual will give a flexibility to drill down to any order of your dimensions right i'll tell you what it means it is also a artificial intelligent uh, visual so you can ask it to find the next dimension to drill down this is very important future you need to understand so once you have a item amount or sales amount to analyze then what should be next analysis where i should drill down right you can ask a system to do it based on the criteria high or low then ai will suggest you what should be analyzed right and this makes it valuable tool for ad hoc exploration and conducting root cause analysis so this is where it is useful while doing some root cause analysis right so this is about uh, this visual when this benefits it will give you when you use this visual what are the limitations of this visual is like it it is not available for on premise uh, analysis services uh, i mean to say like when you have a on premise analysis service data source then it is not available as well as uh, and when you have uh, azure uh, analysis services then ai splits are not allowed so this is another important factor then this feature is not uh, ai splits i will explain about what is ai split so when ai splits is not supported when you have these features right where if you use azure analysis service power bi reports for a published web then support inside question and answers is also not allowed okay let's jump into a demo now we have a data set as usual we have a naga garments data set which contains the sales whether it happen online or offline and what is the product category what is the sales amount tax amount and which location right so i want to analyze the sales amount by different dimension so first things are first so let us try to put the decomposition tree here that visual over here then what you are going to analyze right it accepts only the one single measure so you use that single measure item amount then you keep adding the number of dimension you want to analyze by different dimensions 
and different orders you can analyze that is what i mentioned so let us try to put all the dimension this is product category first i will add a product uh, i mean next i will add a product and order type location then i want to analyze by year as well okay so there are five dimensions uh, maybe i can say four and the category is the uh, product category okay that's fine now five columns i want to analyze right so as soon as you see it what order right you can analyze so you can click on it let me increase the size uh, so that it will be viewable so the category label increases the uh, dis description the category value and data label increases the value of that category now as soon as you choose this plus symbol like high low i will come to that later now you have a flexibility to choose from which level you want to go or which category which column you want to analyze now i want to analyze by year okay now year wise i can analyze but you can see here the order of the year comes at the first okay now it automatically changes now you see the location right i can analyze a location now see automatically this will change so you can define the orders over here now it, it, whatever orders you put it doesn't matter you can choose which order i need to analyze now i can analyze by order type so this is what by default you can do with choosing between the columns which column i need to analyze next so by doing so you can easily see the difference here in 2019 compared to this 2019 has the highest sales in bangalore this is the highest sales right uh, you can see the value difference then on shop is the highest value so this is the flow and some of the basic things about uh, this column is like instead of expanding you can lock this one right so once you lock and uh, publish it you are locking this uh, um, different columns levels and you can publish it so the end user cannot be able to change this order but when you want to give them a flexibility you need to remove it so that end user also can able to add different levels whether he wants to see by category or other uh, <coughs> columns he wants to analyze so these are the basics about um, this particular visual now coming to the core part of uh, ai visual right now you uh, learned in which different orders you can analyze and whatever drill down feature you can do now the important part over here is enable a splits what is that now as soon as you click you see high end value right so now you can choose which is high and which is low as soon as you choose high right it indicates this is the path for you so you can see here the order type becomes first now okay and your year goes here i mean it it depends upon like when you choose a high for this item amount what is the highest value in these columns right in the item type this is the highest value so that comes first then next in this you choose low value among other columns so ignore the item type item name category name location sales data okay which is having the lowest value right accessories having the lowest value that comes first i mean next column so this is the ai capability so it will give you the root cause analysis where you need to analyze from here the from the first step you are seeing the highest value and the next step you can choose the highest or lowest and you you can see this path this is the path it is suggesting to you right so the lowest value as you have said and uh, you can see here item known amount is lowest when category name is accessories so it will suggest you what columns to choose so this is what um, um, i mentioned about the ai capabilities and you can enable it that is ai splits right and one important feature about is let me choose the uh, category name i think um, this one okay 
now you can see the category name right when you have absolute right i say highest value now when you click on casual wear the i order type is the highest value and it appears when you click on accessories you can see the item amount is item name i mean the product is the highest value that entire product becomes the highest value so it becomes your um, next column to be analyzed what i'm trying to say is because we have enabled the ai that is i want to see the highest value in the next column right when you click on casual which is having the highest value uh, in the casual wear is order type having the highest value when you go to formal and semi formal both having the order type column has the highest value that is on shop that is why it is appearing whereas when you consider accessories right the wallet because it contains only one product that becomes your highest value since when you see the order type which is having 154300 so there is a split here so it doesn't come under categories as the highest value when you click on casual wears the order changes okay you you see here so it by default it has set so that is why it has come here now you can enable the uh, location or whatever it is so this is what you can do a self servicing bi and based on the values you choose the ai functionality highest and lowest now i do not want to appear it like the, uh, it is this behavior is because you have absolute uh, value here uh, what is the absolute value that is why it's happening uh, meaning like when i press high value and the analysis type is absolute you get whatever the absolute value um, over here appears in the next highest value i mean the column having the highest value appears here when you put relative here okay the relative means always in the next level whichever is having the highest among the in that column okay the whatever columns it have it compares all other values then gives the highest so since uh, the item amount have only one value that is ignored instead it gives whatever column has different values from that highest so relative will always compare the values in the next column i mean the column values then it will give you the results so these are the some of the quickest thing you need to understand how it helpful when you do your uh, analysis using this particular visual and um, that are the core parts about this visual and you need to understand uh, other properties like primary colors you can uh, you can use uh, different colors over here you can explore all other uh, colors over here the positive bar or negative bars so some of the features are you can understand uh, by self explanatory and other features like shadow tooltip everything is um, common across all other visuals a smart narrative visual in the visuals with nag series if you are new to this channel hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon for notification let's begin our today's topic so what is this visual is all about is like it is a ai powered visual and it used to quickly summarize visuals and reports in a text format okay and to address key takeaways see because uh, this is very important because once you create a report and understanding insight out of it what this report is saying to me it is very difficult to understand for most of the people uh, especially the, those who are in technical background and this particular uh, smart narrative visual will give you a data story about your entire report or the visual that is the a quick thing you can do it using this visual and use smart narratives in powerpoint basically like um, in powerpoint people has to type what are the key takeaways and we can use this uh, when you use the smart narratives you can take a screenshot or you can embed it so that uh, the data get reflected uh, once the data, new data comes in so no need to type in the powerpoint your workload from Uh, your manual intervention to uh, write those uh, data stories will be reduced so as i said in the previous point it helps you to tell a data story right 
so this is what this visual is all about and there are certain limitations to this visual you cannot publish to web power bi report server it is not supported analysis services uh, either tabular multi dimensional or azure no analysis services is uh, allowed and map visual with non aggregated latitude and latitude multi row card so if you use multi row card and it uses more than three categorical then this will not work out and cards with non numerical measure sometimes we will say like uh, first of uh, last of uh, the textual issues those things will not be considered if you use the calculation groups calculation groups this smart narratives won't work let's try to understand it what this smart narrative and we'll go to power bi now so now we are saying like this is uh, naga garments data we know like it contains the total sales amount how many quantities sold in the different locations and years and whether it's on shop or online order by categories now while seeing it i cannot able to analyze much i need to intervene manually like whether this year is less than this year or uh, in this category this is highest uh, everything i need to narrate right i need to understand myself instead if power bi itself tells me what is doing well what is not then that will be better right that is what this smart narrative to do in order to do for the entire report i have created some space you can press this smart narrative visual once you click on it it will automatically creates a summary for you you can see here you can increase the entire uh, font size to 16 so that it will be easy to understand let's walk through what it generated for us now you can see 2635700 that is casual wear had the highest item amount and was 806 percentage higher than the accessories so it is trying to compare the least uh, categorical value with the highest value so that is what uh, it happened here so that is the point about here and the lowest value for the accessories is this one 2900 and casual wear had the highest item amount okay this is having highest item amount followed by semi formal formal and accessories so this is how usually people will be narrating the stories so this smart narrative will give you that uh, analytical capability for you and also you can see all other points over here and uh, i just want to highlight some other points now you want to make something dynamic like this is everything is dynamic what i'm trying to say is when you click on only on shop all these things will change based on your selection okay based on your selection uh, the smart narrative keep on uh, changing the some values based on the selection you have made if if you choose uh, 2019 then what was the um, different narrative stories based on that selection okay so this is again uh, interactive it will interact with uh, other visuals and one important point i want to make here is like you can dynamically set some value or you can try to edit some content here like um, the total sales in total sales in chennai okay something like that okay anything you can add and what you i am saying is like you can able to add your text on your own okay this is the summary of this particular analysis like that content or you want to add some headers or footers whatever you can add on top of that you can add your own calculations that is what i am saying so let me add some value here chennai okay total sales in chennai that's what i want now here i can start typing total item amount in chennai okay this is the one of the uh, location so total item amount in chennai okay this is the value you can see what is the value here when you click on it that will appear so i can make that value over here you can see here the total value in chennai is okay that that is the value you can start writing it so you can write your own calculations by using a question and answer feature and the value will be replicated here you can format this text along with the other text or to align with it 
so now you can see the total sales in Chennai is so when you click on it so that value will appear 108 that is what it's appearing here when you click on uh, some other period in 2020 and Chennai 336 that will reflect here and if you uncheck it it will still show the Chennai value okay and apart from the selection here we have unselected but we have filtered only for Chennai in question and answer right so question and answer future embedded here and this value is totally formatable like uh, how you can format is like uh, you can click on this visual and you can start editing the values like currency uh, whether it's in US dollars so, or say for example it's in US dollars so I can put that value over here and this value also totally formatable okay now it's appearing so this is how you can uh, format it so basically you can have for the entire report now another important feature I want to highlight is like we will remove this smart narrative here and I can enable the uh, smart narrative only for this visual how you can do it click on it and then use summarize so when you click on it it will summarize for only for this visual okay so you can see at 2440 is a cash flow we are had the highest amount so it will give you the smart narrative story so if you want to add some other contents you can add it as I mentioned below that will be dynamically changing based on your selection I hope uh, you understand this property I mean this uh, I hope you understand this visual and you can see here as soon as you click on it the visualization pane will disappear you will have only the format box for it when you touch it so other properties remain same like uh, there are nothing more you can add these are the generic properties only thing you need to worry about this um, uh, plus value that is you can add a dynamic value here this channel contains the uh, free content worth thousand dollars or eighty thousand worth INR so please utilize this channel which covers SSIS, SSAS, SSRS basically Microsoft Business Intelligence Platform along with Power BI. This channel also contains SQL Server for beginners. They can learn SQL. So as you can see in this diagram, the Sankey chart is uh, contains a source and your target the relationship between the source and target can be easily identified using this chart that is the core objective of this chart let us try to discuss what is this all about and what you can expect from this video if you're new to this channel hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon for notification let's begin so as the name indicates it is used to emphasize a major transfer or flows within a system so if you have a system and what is the different flows of your uh, system and you can be able to identify using this uh, particular chart and also one more thing is to represent the width of the flow represents the volume the you can see here this is having a bigger width than this particular brown line which indicates here it has uh, more value whatever measures you want to analyze this is having more value than this particular flow so that is what a uh, meaning of this so what you can expect is in this video is like i'm going to demonstrate a simple sanki chart by using um, different import of country to export of a country we have a source to target of uh, two different countries and with some volume of uh, export value then next i'm going to demonstrate the multi-level sanki chart where in between you have the source countries to different products and to the target countries so how we can do it let us begin with a simple chart now I am in Power BI now let me show the data for Sankey analysis 
where you can have a source and target and you have a revenue where from the sources countries you are exporting some uh, goods or anything to the target countries and this is the revenue so you if you do not have a data you can compute it but if you have these fields like you have source and target and you have other fields as well you can still use this chart for my case i have made a very simple case here source target and revenue now in order to do a sanki chart we do not have uh, in the default visuals you need to import it from the custom visual for in order to do that go to get more visuals click on three dots and click on that get more visuals option once you are done that it will log into the power bi apps and uh, it will try to list down the all possible um, combination of visuals that is available and we can choose from that one so it's launching let's start typing sand key and press enter now this is the one we want to add this is uh, something parallel uh, i mean parallel uh, sand key chart this is horizontal so let us go with this default one so once you are imported you have this appeared uh, the one below say a small grid line dotted lines which indicates these are the custom visuals so just use this visual here then try to expand it a little bit and you have source and the target as soon as you define it you can see the relationship between the countries these are the import countries and these are the target export countries when you click on it you can see each having the same uh, grid line the length i mean the width now as soon as you add the weight in the revenue based on the export value the value the grids is change now when you click on canada you can see more or less everything having the same line you know uh, it should not be um, um the uh, count it should be treated as the integer i'm not sure why it is considered as uh, text let me check it out the data now you have a revenue here let me change it to change type to whole number then press close and apply there you go now you can drag and drop the weight now you can see the huge difference from here here you can see uh, from canada the export is very less whereas uh, this particular france they are exporting more and they are getting 1650 million revenue here only 520 million revenue so from this you easily on click of it you can see the relationship where and all which and all countries they are exporting from one country to another this is a very simple example so you need um, as uh, you can see the options here source destination and weight and what about the multi-level in between you want to have another layer right for that let us try to see the data here and we need to do a small kind of computation here and i will try to explain it so the simple chart is done for the levels having multi levels right you not to have a multi level now the scenario is your source is there target is there in between what items they will import or export right from source vegetables exported to japan cosmetic export to france so it it has to come in between so how you can achieve this in power bi in sanki chart so in order to do that as we can see in the sanki chart we have option to source and target there is no option to have another value over here you cannot add another column each field accepts only one so you need to change in such a way that first you need to compute this to 
two column with another uh, value column like what i'm trying to say is the source and item should be in this column the target column then the item and target should come in the same value so this is the thing you need to do like you need to split into two tables and then combine it into a single table where you have a source target and revenue so basically it will have india vegetables some value then vegetables japan another row so you need to split this one single row into two india vegetable 1630 and japan vegetable or vegetable japan 1630 in case of this india medical equipment 1130 then medical equipment kuwait 1130 something like that so how you can do it let us do it not do it in dax let us go for um, power query what i want to do is like i will do a reference of this table twice the sample sanki sample I'm doing the reference one with um, source to source underscore item that is my first table then I will rename this to item underscore target right these are the two tables now in this I want to group by source and item so choose these two columns press this and control these two columns then choose group by then go here sum of revenue you put it as uh, new revenue right then click on ok now this should be considered as target rename it to target this is step number one so you copied this and source an item table and you have a source and item is changed as target now come to item target table that what which is a copy of this then you choose item and target okay then use group by then choose some revenue what happens is like new revenue use the name like this then your target remains same then keep this item as source okay so two changes two tables you have created source and target your item becomes target in the source item table in item target your item becomes source in this table the name should be same the source target new revenue and here source target new revenue let me copy this uh, new revenue here as well the column name should be exactly the same now either you can create a new table and append or you can merge in the same table let us try to create append two tables right one is um, source item current and um, no sorry i need to delete this step basically what i'm trying to do is you you have achieved some table here that is source item uh, from source to item is considered as one target and you need to match these table as well here in this so go to append then choose item target then press ok as the name are same append will do uh, the concatenation of your records so now you are done you have a single table now this should be considered as your sand key report two okay now we no need of uh, this table so disable from the load even this table is not required we need only this sand key report to which we transferred uh, the india to vegetables this value and vegetables to some other target country into another record let us try to close so now we no more have a sand key sample we have sand key report to 
now let me create a new report sankey report here then as usual you can use the source target there you go you can see the three levels over here and this new revenue should go obviously over here now in this way you can able to do different levels of data i hope you understand the concept behind sankey chart and when to use it and you have also understand about how to configure multi-level in sankey chart parento chart which is also called as 80 20 rule where 80 percentage of the effects occur from 20 percentage of the causes so we will try to identify 20 percentage of the causes once we fix this then 80 percentage of the effects will be handled so what is this how we can implement it in power bi let us check it out in this video the parento chart basically what or how it looks like it's a kind of chart that contains bars and line graph basically it's a bar and line chart that is pre-existing chart in the power bi and we need to design it in such a way that your values should be represented in the descending orders by bars and the cumulative total is represented by the lines so once you have defined this chart and with this configuration then it becomes a parity chart and as we said it is so famous for 80 20 rule like 80 percentage of the effects come from 20 percentage of the causes meaning like if you consider uh, some product testing some defects or effects happening or causes 80 percentage of the effects right that is due to only few causes you the main purpose of uh, this chart is to identify this top 20 percentage of the causes like over here you can see in this chart where you can see 80 percentage of the problem occurred due to these two task so that covers almost um, maybe 10 or below 20 percentage so this is what it is uh, the parent of principle is all about and uh, there are a lot of examples uh, for a parent chart uh, a lot of applications for it and um, in our case today we are going to see about what is the total sales or which countries or which um, products have contributed 80 percentage uh, I mean it is not basically 80 percentage it is the key factor here this part we need to identify so these are the top countries that contributed more almost 80 percentage other countries are contributed only 20 percentage so it can be either used for um, negative case like uh, which are the two defects caused 80 percentage of the effects i mean and it's not a two which um, causes right top causes to identify the defects on in a positive case which are the countries contributed more sales that is 80 percentage of the sales so this is the thing you need to understand with this note let us try to begin how to configure this in power bi we are in power bi now and I have designed this uh, chart um, using uh, different products. So in my case, I have given like, this is my peak point, like uh, these five products has almost contributed 80% uh, whereas other five products contributed only 20%. So I can focus on these five products now. So from this, it is evident and almost you can also see these two products alone contributed 50 percentage so viewing the data like this will give us very good uh, understanding about what is happening so now you can see uh, i used uh, the simple chart here that is line and stack column chart okay um so using that i've created either you can create uh, this one also line and clustered column chart not an issue whatever it can be now in order to do that i will do step by step 
and for that let us try to understand the data first as I mentioned before we need to have the data by different um, product I mean product wise the descending let us try to view the data and have um, product name and product name wise sales amount that is the sales amount over here right and let us try to do it by descending so I need to have the cumulative total first right so let us try to increase the uh, data a little bit so that it is easy to understand for everyone and I will make the background uh, to gray so that it is easy for us to view it a little bit better that's fine now I hope uh, you can able to see it let me increase the size of the headers as well okay now these are the products and this is my sales amount I am viewing it by the descending of the sales amount and once you have done that you need to achieve the cumulative product right for that I don't want to waste your time I have already created uh, the measure over here that is parent to cumulative now what it does is let us try to walk through this uh, code you can take a screenshot and you need to write on your own for based on your different tables right so let me instead of uh, this uh, product name I will use the product name from the product master as it is already connected right so I connected here now let us go through this formula uh, over here that is parento cost cumulative so what it does is we need to get the total sales amount and this sales amount should be greater than this sale right so each row it has to work on and whether if it is greater than that value till that it will loop through then it will cumulate right that is the logic we have written it here once I put this one you can see the value over here here I have divided let me comment it out I, I have divided the total sales here instead I will try to get the cumulative value first then we can see the percentage value I need to remove this percentage it should be whole number there you go now you can see this summed up with the next value will give you 289150 and this summed up with this will give you 364750 so it is cumulative at the end you will get the desired results so the core logic remains here so the sale is sum of sales we will store it in a variable and then the calculate function does the magic as usual we need to get the total sales this sales measure is nothing but uh, again the sum of sales but I'm not using it from here or either you can write it over here sum of total sales right sum of sales amount okay so this calculates the sum of sales amount and then filter all selected so it will I have already mentioned what all selected will do so filter all selected the product master name here you use whatever value specific to your uh, whatever reports you are using then use the calculate function calculate sum of sales at the here the context transition happens then it will try to compare with this variable so it will loop through till the value is greater than that particular row right so once it matches then it stops so uh, it will sum it up till this point then it will add the value that is the logic you need to understand so this is the formula you can take a snapshot and you need to change accordingly this product master is the value that you are using in the axis then this amount is the amount that you are trying to compare in a parent chart that's it 
once you are done with this then you are done with the cumulative value and in order to get the percentage we need to have the all sales right so all sales is available over here the all sales is nothing but you need to divide this value right parent of this value divided by all sales that will give you some percentage right that is what i'm going to do it in the next step so divide 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 the entire thing comma sorry after this then that all sales you put all sales here this will give us some value in uh, percentage right uh, i need to set it to two digits and the decimal value then you make it as a percentage that's it so the same formula you are adding you you can create uh, two separate measures and create uh, another one but i'm doing it in the same parent to cumulative so you can see here this particular product itself will give you 25.75 percentage these two contributes to 50 percentage and keeps on adding cumulative so this is the logic we need to keep on once we are done these are the three things we need that's it you can go and uh, switch to your parent to chart take this cumulative value over here that's it so we have already designed similar to what we have uh, done so far let me take um, the formatting option from here and choose it over here so i have set only um the value for here i mean this will show you now from this diagram as i mentioned before these five products itself contributed eight uh, 80 percentage and these two has contributed 50 percentage you can identify whichever is performing more in this case to discuss about gantt chart let us try to discuss what it is and when to use this in this video if so a Gantt chart is basically a type of bar chart and that illustrates a project schedule. Uh, as you can see, like the tasks to be performed will be available in the vertical axis. What are the tasks or uh, the projects you need to track will be available in your vertical axis and the time intervals on the horizontal axis you can see time interval unless uh, i mean instead of having it in the x axis at the bottom the time interval will be appearing at the top right but it is not exactly the bar chart but it looks like um, differently to track the project so this project has to be started here and to be ended here and what is the current status of it that is what you can easily track each project or in the project each stages how it is performing with this note let us try to demonstrate in power bi we are in uh, power bi now and as usual this is not available in the default visualization the gantt chart so in order to do that we need to import it right so go to get more visuals you go to the app source and start typing gantt chart hit enter and you can see it here there are different options and i i want to highlight like for each and a, a different visuals available here you need to compute the data that matches this chart basically for each chart there should be some uh, data format uh, the data should be in this format right uh, either the start date end date should be in a column or for each stages it should be in a column right uh, let me show it to you what i'm trying to say let us try to import it click on add you can go for any um, gantt chart but for simply for understanding the gantt chart i'm trying to explain uh, with the basic chart so what i am trying to say here so this is the gantt chart once we have imported now let us go and check the data here where i have a two projects that is 05 and 06 where each stage kickoff execution uat go live these are the different stages in each of the project so there is a planned date for it 
and actual date for it right and there is some times for each stage you have some milestones as well so for this gantt chart to work you need to have a data like this if you on your source you do not have a data in this format instead of this the kick off execution uat go live everything will be available in a column like kick off start date completion date in a column maintenance start date maintenance completion will be the column so basically for each project you have a single record and different columns then you need to convert into this way then only this can chart will work that is what i meant for other visuals other gantt charts require different uh, format of data uh, the data structure so you need to ensure that is done so for now to demonstrate this gantt chart the simple gantt chart let us begin with our data set whatever we exist so when i click on it it will appear here then let me explain the mandatory fields here as we are going to track the project schedule any schedule should have a start date and end date so let us try to drag and drop the start date and end date first and this is the start date and this is the end date so i have put it here then another important field here is the task that is whatever you want to track let us start with the project it is it is it is it is combined for each record for each row whatever you have for each row in the table 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 but that is not our intended uh, behavior our intended uh, data should see the for each project you need to so pages right so pages right so here it should appear single only once this project so in order to do that drag and drop the uh, legend right or i mean first before, in order to in order to see it in a single way group task so when you enable it the you can say and uh, combine uh, combine the so unique rec many unique rec many unique rec you you have you will have those okay task okay okay now now for now for each task it each task it is saying like is saying like it and start start and start start date ended but what are these start date ended for different stages right in order to view that you go and uh, check the stages in legends you put the stages now you can clearly see here for each project you have a start date that is it is from january the 1st and 2020 right and end date is 15th of january 2020 so this is what you can able to see it here that is the thing right and you also noted like uh, here it is comes as earliest this is not the correct one because we have uh, two dates for uh, uh, completion date that is for if you consider what i'm trying to say is for each stage right for 05 05 and we are seeing the kick new click on kick off new click on kick off there are two dates one is for planned or or another one is for uh, actual so there are two start dates and two completion date this can be different dates right so but now how you are seeing it here here you can see it is com comes as a earliest date right so if you want to track the project without actual only the plan actual then this this view whatever we are you are viewing is perfectly all right right what is the current state of uh, each project and in order to view it by split like uh, for this project what is my actual and uh, planned then you need to use this project in the parent then your task should be planned or actual there you go now you can see for this project 05 you have a planned start date is from start date is from january the 1st and end date is 31st of january and your uh, kick off date for actual is ended on january the 15th view you, from this view you can quickly see this kick off is what the actual is 
the actual is completed earlier to that right so this is what you can easily track your projects based on the planned and actual activities for this gantt shot i hope uh, we have seen how you can config how you can configure let me quickly explain some of the key of it so in a, so in a view view this now it is uh, not to change it not to change it to yearly or this period this is the property the date type you can see like a month or better you can keep it as a year right so for each year you can keep this is the whole data the from 2023 years so you can see different stages here this is the first property then i have to expand this one the another property is like um, um i think it will be like a category increase can increase this width so let me increase it to one fifth can view so you can view this one so these are the two important properties you can think of there are other properties that i have already explained you know to uh, group the task and uh, you can have um, milestones here i mean to say like milestones right here you can add the milestone so milestones once you have it you can have some values over here these are the different milestones you can set off now one more thing i want to highlight here is this is the today right this is the indicator of uh, whenever you are having the bar here this is indicates like this is today's date you can uh, enable or disable this then instead of um, the end date right here you can have the duration field you, in, you do not have the end date but you have a duration start date and duration okay you can have that column here then in the properties you have uh, something called um, a duration right uh, you can see here a uh, number of uh, duration unit whether you are mentioning it in number of days or duration in weeks or hours okay there might be sometimes it will be you are tracking uh, every day so duration can be hours or minutes so you need to mention that here you can change that property as well so this is what a gantt chart using this gantt chart you can easily track your projects and what are the different properties available i have explained it what is a tree visual and when to use it uh, in the visuals with nag series a tree visual is used to view the hierarchical data especially a parent child hierarchy if you are not familiar with uh, what do you mean by parent child hierarchy just continue watching this video you will understand and when to use this visual before going to power bi i just want you to understand what is mean by parent child hierarchy if you are not familiar with you have uh, this sales territory this is not a parent child hierarchy where your hierarchies are predefined what i'm saying here this is the least level that is territory region which is having 10 regions and these 10 regions belong to these countries you can see united states canada france germany australia six countries and these countries belongs to these territory groups there are three territory groups so you have a three level hierarchy here correct this is the fixed hierarchy and there is no issues with that when you analyze in power bi you can keep adding this territory three columns then you will get the hierarchy but what is the problem with the parent child hierarchy one typical example of parent child hierarchy is like your employee table where you have a employee data and is parent data here right so there can be 10 to 12 levels or 15 levels based on your organization people will define different uh, hierarchies right it can be 10 12 15 or even it can be 5 to 6 also it depends upon each company now instead of creating 15 columns to maintain the hierarchy what people will do is like they will create one record per employee and another column to map who is his superior you can see here for employee 1 18 is the parent key he can be a low level employee at the lowest level 
and his manager or whoever he is reporting to is 18 when you go to 18 he is reporting to 23 and when you go to 23 he is reporting to 112 okay and when you go to 112 he is not reporting anyone he is the ceo when the top level it comes to he will not report to anyone he is the top root level so that is how you will maintain the hierarchy this is called parent child hierarchy how you need to analyze it so the conventional hierarchical manner you cannot analyze uh, such hierarchies you cannot create the hierarchies here when you uh, drag and drop uh, some visuals here let's say like you have a bar chart here and you have a parent uh, hierarchy here and employee hierarchy and you put some values how many uh, gender underneath so it will create a confusion because you need to view by the hierarchical manner what I'm saying you should see the CEO first underneath VPs vice presidents and department heads underneath right so how you can achieve it so conventional charts will not allow it here for that you need to go for a uh, custom visual so how you can go it and get it if you are uh, new to power bi you can get it from uh, app store that you for that you need to be logged in and you can um, go to uh, app store and then you can download it from there so once you have logged in you can go here and search for it i prefer there are a lot of uh, tree visuals available you can see to view the tree and this is what the ck corporation developed by ck compression i prefer i personally used it it was really good and easy to use so once you click on it it will import it here and let's start working on that hierarchy i hope you are clear with uh, why we need to use uh, this visual in what type of uh, data visuals i mean what even your data is having a parent child hierarchy and you need to view it visualize it you need to go for such a tree visuals you can see here uh, the tree visual as soon as it started it is asking for parent id and the id so as we already seen this data you can see employee key parent key and for each employee what is the name gender everything together and what i quickly did is i combined this first name and last name in power query itself so i derived the full name here to view it in the chart so let us try to map this uh, chart so parent id is parent key and your uh, employee key is employee key over here right and then until you put some measure value you will not get here measure is typically like you can put some values over here but i want to view the names so i can put a measure name over here right full name as um, measure i mean to say uh, it, it it always we remember like measure is a count of values or sum of values but i am putting it here uh, full name because i want to display that name here okay that is why i have used the full name here and additional parameters you can keep adding it here that way i come to that later now this is what uh, the tree visual will look like and you can click on it as soon as you click on it it will expand it you can see here uh, these are the next level of members right so you can see there is no members uh, next to this for after this level this employee uh, there is no one he is reporting to him that is why it was empty and you can see for this employee it is uh, circled and there is some reporting members okay for him also under name there are two more members so as soon as you change the layout it is um, i mean to say like when you change it it will redirecting to uh, the initial position okay so this is the main objective of this tree visual and you can do some kind of uh, customization as well when you mouse over it over here like uh, employee uh, and you can get the, some details over here and i want to see oh, what is his marital status and the higher date as well so once you expand you can see here immediately his marital status is single and he is hired on 2018-11-7 so this is how you can uh, customize these properties and some of the interesting properties uh, i want to highlight is like uh, 
you can do the general is something is to configure here and um, you can do the vertical and um, or uh, horizontal so that it will be looking like a typical tree like structure and you see here it is collapsed right so you can always customize the property and default expanded level you can increase it to four so that uh, at least for first four levels it will keep increasing okay uh, instead of um, your um, uh, vertical horizontal looks uh, better to me you can uh, revert back to that but i want to show some other properties before that now it based upon your customization right whichever fits for you you can do it so now you can see here the nodes property under nodes the distance between the nodes okay now here you can increase a uh, little bit 150 okay it should be 150 it sorry be with me so that it will look better and usually the hierarchical chart will be viewed for against each department right so let me introduce the filter over here um, so let us go for finance now you can see it little clear right the root node and david liu and wendy is uh, below uh, the finance team and under them these are the different members after that and um, uh, as we see there are a lot of properties you can change some of the properties i want to highlight is like um, uh, you can specify this uh, uh, the circle or or rectangle and you can see like this text has to go inside or outside so if you say go inside and also you can increase the size of the circle so people some of the values it will be inside okay i mean if it is it is not an employee it can be any hierarchy that parent child hierarchy based upon your business so it will go and fit in so this customization you can do and um, another important property i want to highlight is like labels you can see here this measure okay this measure is appeared as a label in this node right what about other properties along with this name i want to show some other properties as well right for that you need to ensure you add the values here the marital status high date or uh, whatever columns you add okay this is the index zero and higher date is one and you add some other column higher uh, title means that will be uh, the index will be two so if you highlight it right in this node you can get the all the values but what i require i require along with this node i require the sum of the label for that go to here labels then you can add some symbol or whatever i just press uh, colon and then press zero zero is nothing but your um your gender correct and you see as soon as i add gender i got this value when i press one it will get me uh, that um, birth date or higher date now when you press two it will give me the designations as well okay instead of this i can have only this also okay accountant who are the values over here right so it is more customizable and uh, let me revert it back okay let me put a zero here so that it is looking better so these are some of the properties you can go for and you can add uh, different um, departments like this so that you can while projecting in your meetings you can always filter with some departments right usually hierarchy chart by department because you cannot have an entire organization in a single chart i hope a waffle chart as part of visuals with nag series so i am in power bi now so what is a waffle chart uh, waffle chart is like uh, some kind of similar kind of uh, distribution like a pie chart and a donut chart so what it does is like it's used to give a status of different categorical value right in terms of percentage let's me walk you through this so that you will understand let us see the data first i am having a three or uh, four category of uh, data and uh, for simplicity i have only this uh, four uh, characters and 
typically I want to display this uh, actual value in my status so each uh, for each category what is the actual sales or what is the actual completion so this is the planned amount I mean this this many has to be sold but this has been sold so this is what I want to track it can be used for the KPI as well so this is the waffle chart I have uh, imported from um, app source so if you are uh, new to this power bi i don't know how to do it once you log into your power bi service you go and use the get more visuals and you will get a list i mean it will take you to the app source and here you start typing waffle chart so this chart i have downloaded this is something else we will talk about it in some other video now you click on it and it will be imported in your power bi file so let me take this one here and then you can use this category and values everywhere over here but first things first so let me take actual value and put it in values once you put this one it will not give you anything and you see the blank value so for this chart the category is important so once you put this one you can see the actual value over here right 90 40 25 35 it has been splitted across the category so this waffle chart can be used for many purposes so you can derive this value for each category and track some percentage of completion with a single column alone meaning like you have this category and actual value and then you display it but it uh, you do not want to do that you want to do it as goal and the kpi kind of thing and you can set the maximum value so that is the plant when you drag and drop the planned value now you see it the percentage changes let us go to data let us take the bike example which is the simplest example the bike the planned sales should be 80 and the actual is 40 which is 50 percentage of it so that is what it is showing when you remove the plant it will show the actual value as a percentage whatever value you are showing here that uh, actual value right for the bike 40 40 is showing exactly here okay that is the main difference so once you have uh, you want to track the planned and actual with percentage completion you can use this buffer chart so this kind of charts it's uh, the you will give a different look to your power bi reports that's why i'm uh, recommending this people are bored with uh, some conventional reporting or kpi uh, viewing the kpis in cage or by chart or bar charts then they can look up this option let me uh, walk you through other options available that is what i want to highlight now now you do not like this uh, kind of um, what you call um, um, this particular shapes right so for that you can go to this uh, path like you can set up this path okay i will share the link in the description where you can find what is this path indicates i will share the link in the description which is the path which is nothing but which is nothing but svg file i mean svg uh, um, script okay this script will enable you to create different shapes you can see this is one kind of shape and this is another kind of shapes right so this will give you another look as well so this is the path path is nothing but uh, your shapes for this and one last thing to highlight here is like you can set the minimum value field optional field and what it does see that when you add a I mean see the you can see the bike turn to 43 percentage what it means so what it does is like this value will be subtracted from your planned and actual and from there it will calculate that is this will become 70 and this will become 30 so what is the percentage distribution of 30 for 70 let us try to do the calculation so 30 divided by 70 will equal to 428 that is 43 percentage 
that is what it is appearing here so this is what a minimum value most of the times this won't be useful in some business scenarios they want to uh, ignore certain part from that so in that cases you can use it so it is not straightforward whatever minimum value or maximum value you need to use as such is provided whichever is the mandatory field you can use it other things are optional and based on your business needs you can customize this that is what i want to make it here Welcome to Analytics with Nax. This is another video in the Visuals with Nax series where I'm going to discuss this, uh, one of the uh, custom visual and where you can see you can able to design your charts in such a way that it will be more aligned to your business. This is like typically a beer bottle manufacturing company and it is trying to get the sales across each location using the beer bottles itself so this visual give you a good uh, visual appearance as well as it is easy to tell the story as well let's try to understand when to use this visual if you are new to this channel hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon for notification let's begin so when to use it is used to beautify your reports with ease to create infographics there is no much um, designing uh, things required for you designing knowledge just uh, most of the things are pre defined so you can use it highly tailored to your specific topic so basically like as i said in the previous example it's a beer bottle manufacturing company so the bottles are uh, placed in place of infographics in case of other business your business specific images can be placed over there then a specific appearance of it is typically a bar charts or column charts represented in different shapes with colors and layouts as well so for these purposes you will go for infographic designer basically in order to tell a data story using the charts or these dashboards if you have a different um, images instead of uh, conventional bar charts pie charts this will give a uh, people a uh, business owners a different feeling that is the main purpose of this infographic design let's try to understand with one of the example the naga garments we are in power bi now <coughs> let me create uh, some page background as gray so that it will be very visually appealing now we have this data it is simple sales data that those who are following my channel they are familiar with this uh, data set like naga garments data where we have a sale date and we have uh, products sold across different categories these are the products and what is the item quantity and what is the item amount this is the sales amount typically let's try to understand how much quantity it has been sold um using a simple bar chart let me try to have one bar chart here this is the typical bar chart right so we have item quantity and i want to analyze by the category so this is how usually we will analyze the data right so instead of analyzing a conventional way of uh, reporting we can introduce a new type of chart called uh, infographic designer so this is the custom visual so you need to uh, log in into uh, account and then you can download it otherwise you can download it using a website app source then you can do it right in my case i have uh, downloaded here and i have utilized from here so let me walk you through so if you want you can import from visual from a file when you go to this you have a source and then you can see custom visuals i have downloaded it so just choose this one you can see this is the infographic designer then click on open once you open it will appear here so let us try to insert this one here so infographic designer same thing i will try to imitate whatever we have seen so it is item quantity and item category so there is no much difference here casual wear semi formal accessories and formal so typically it gives us initially a bar chart okay then what how we can configure 
as we said before different uh, based on the different business you can configure different images over here right so you can notice uh, one uh, pencil icon here which is saying like edit mark so you need to press this one let me zoom our focus mode so that it will be easy for us to configure it so the first thing so first you need to choose the shapes to change any shapes for this uh, visual as <coughs> excuse me as this is um, belongs to a um, uh, garment shop let us try to choose something with the garments there you go you have something over here let me choose a shirt so now you can see as soon as uh, choose one of the image you can see a different uh, for each category the same image appeared here I will quickly walk you through some of the properties then we will come to change uh, different images as well now this is the first things so you can change the image you can see it over here then fill percentage it is you can see now this data is fully filled then you can choose what item to fill here right based on the item quantity you can choose this one right basically it will give you a uh, impression like this is less than this value that is the point you want to understand so this is about uh, fill percentage and uh, <coughs> there is something like um, you have option to choose the background for this and fill directions from where it has to be filled from bottom to top or uh, top to bottom or uh, something some visuals it will be appearing from uh, left to right right in that cases you can choose uh, right to left or uh, left to right right so this is the option in our case we will go for bottom to top then you can see here you can choose multiple units over here this option is uh, very useful i mean useful why because you can see how many units it should appear over here right so how many rows count how many column counts it should appear you can customize this like i want um, one row three ro uh, units per row something like this so you can fill this one based on uh, i will revert this one now so i need row count right one two three and then units per row that is one it is split into one now you can see if you press two it will be split across this right so based on this you can have a different view of it right um, uh, <coughs> out of six these many things are filled it will be percentage based on the percentage contribution it will be split and it will be filled so this is what um, about this multiple option and sometimes you feel like this is uh, huge uh, or uh, it is bigger and this is smaller and this is very small instead of this i want everything to be equal size and make that fill right for that the option available over here layout and you choose bound to to outer so what will happen is like it will show the bars equally and then how much it has been filled that gives you the value so it will give the overall value so this is about um, in a nutshell how you can configure it so let us uh, revert back uh, to something like um, 3 is to 1 it will be looking better and i will show you now to configure for each category it is dynamically can configurable it's not like you cannot have a dax measure i hope for, but manually you can do it how you can do it you can go to here that is link button here you need to choose the data binding for what you want to do a data binding i want to do a data binding for each category i want different images choose the data category and for casual viewer let me choose this one for semi formal let it be this one and accessories um, i hope uh, shoes accessory let us go for a uh, shoe for accessories and formal i will remain it same <coughs> excuse me so once you click on apply you can see a different images over here so this is how you can able to 
change the images for the each category so basically like you might uh, ask me like whether i can have my own um, images yes you can so you can see you can have to upload svg document here once you upload you all your uploaded documents will appear here and you can go and choose from the shapes i mean once you have um, uploaded you can go over here and choose from this uploaded option so this is uh, how you can design your own uh, shapes as well and you can upload it and use those images over here so this is uh, about uh, this visual <coughs> one thing to highlight um, in this is like uh, let me zoom in again you can change the uh, colors uh, of um, these um, values like value colors you can choose again from here you can choose category once you click on apply different colors you can apply for this each category and you can add some text on top of it uh, that's what i said the format you can see insert a text so you can see start text started appearing over here and you can also choose now you are setting all the properties for the text now you can choose outbound okay outer so it will appear over at the top and what text it should appear right so you can format it here i need to show the value of the quantity okay so i have chosen here you can see instead of this text i want it should show item quantity unrounded or it should be rounded to two decimal points then press ok for this you can set the size or uh, whatever i can choose some um, the font as 20 over here then font style as italic something like that ok so this is uh, your text properties and if you want to switch back you can choose the shape properties you can set it over here if you do not want the text you can click on the text and you can delete it or you can add another text everywhere <coughs> or if you do not want this text you can press uh, this delete and uh, if you want to add some other text another text also it is possible to add anywhere in this graphics so let me delete this one so it is deleted if you want you can keep it for your reference this is another important property i want to highlight and um, other properties let us close this one once you are done you close the over the designer then this is done now you can see here from the diagram now you can see here instead of seeing the uh, diagram from the top this looks more appealing like more aligned with your business semi-formal accessories or formal business based on the infographics you can get the item value as well and some other properties the whatever you are designing this is specific to infographic custom visual designer you are designing it here and these formats are similar to any other charts like shadow tool tips every other things background titles everything and one important property to highlight here is like um, click on this chart so you see all other properties are same here here the type is column if you want to start appearing like um, now it's um, appearing uh, vertically that is column chart if you want a bar charts you see the categories appeared in the y-axis it moved like this so this is the property you want to change then line chart it becomes a typical line chart they're not talking about it so column or bar chart will be useful then you you can switch off or on this x-axis y-axis and other properties are common you can play around with that and you can change this uh, font size axis fonts other things you can play around with that this is what the infographic designer is all about as actually this is used uh, very well suited for your business you can see your business visuals over here i mean 
this is very good for storytelling and it will be more aligned with your business welcome to analytics with nux in this video we are going to discuss about a tornado chart as part of visuals with nux series as you can see in this image a tornado appears like this where a huge value or a huge density at the top and when you narrow down to the ground it will be a very smaller in length similar way the tornado chart over your right hand side having a whatever data set having huge value that appears at the top and when we move towards down a smaller value will be followed so that is why it named like tornado chart so when to use it and what is the purpose of it let us try to check it out in this video when to use it so it's a special type of bar chart and you can be used as a replacement of bar chart uh, where the data categories are listed vertically instead of horizontal and categories are ordered so that the largest bar appears at the top of the chart and the second largest appears second from the top and so on as i said before in this um, um, chart where the categories the largest value appears at the top and followed by the smallest values and the categories are vertical it is not horizontal so this is the vertical vertically it is aligned so this is what um, this chart about you can be used as a replacement for bar chart uh, and uh, one thing to highlight is like it will take only two categories in the legend area if you have more values in the legend area it will not take it whatever in the appears first those two will be taken i will show it to you literally in the power bi let's move on to power bi now so we are in power bi now and as you can see uh, this chart uh, let me remove it so those who are new to power bi and don't know what is this uh, custom visual basically this tornado chart is not part of the default visuals available in power bi you need to download from the app source so if you have already logged in i have not logged in if you are logged in you use this option get more visuals once you choose this a screen similar to this appear and you type tornado chart then this will prompt you you can get it now otherwise you can log in through web browser any browser ie or edge whatever then use appsource.microsoft.com get it now once you click on it it will download for you once you download it then use the way i am doing it now import visual from a file then navigate to the path so i have downloaded uh, and stored uh, here in the source custom visuals here it is so once you download that file you need to choose click on open already i uploaded it is appearing here so i am choosing this now this doesn't contain any um, complex items it contains only three items group legend and values so let's first put the measure item quantity as soon as you put it there is nothing happened here but when you put a category now you can see it's typically like um, clustered bar chart appears over here but the key factor over here is you add a legend now you can see a difference right <coughs> um, the legend it takes only two values okay male and female now it looks like a tornado where at the top you have a highest values followed by second highest and the lowest values appears at the bottom so this is what uh, tornado chart which will give you different uh, visual feeling now <coughs> you can set uh, some of the properties here uh, data labels this is the data label you can increase the uh, size over here so that it will appear and group also you can increase the size i can set it to 10 and then you can change the colors and um, legend you can increase uh, the size as well also if you want uh, you can change the uh, colors uh, whatever it wants to be so this is what uh, tone on the chart is and one important aspect i want to highlight is like let me copy this uh, page and i will change it to the clustered column chart or clustered bar chart like this now you can see a gender appears female male and na so na is orange but in our 
previous chart it took only two values that is casual wear and male as i said before it will compare only two values it will take only two values and compare so male and female in the legend so this is the important factor that you need to understand and mostly these kind of comparison as you see in the magazines of uh, population or gender inequality between male and female across different states for these kind of comparison people use the tornado charts play access visual as you might have seen in the internet like uh, we have uh, some kind of charts here and the without filtering it will be keep on changing this will be moving up and down based on the each year what is the actual value it will keep changing right so this is the global brands across uh, different years 20 years and each brand will keep on moving up and down so as a visual when you see it it will be uh, looking very good so that is what how you can implement similar visual in power bi you cannot achieve the same result whatever you have seen in the internet but you can achieve uh, somewhat related results using this play access visual in power bi that is what we are going to see as part of this video so i am in power bi now where i have uh, adventure works uh, database over here if you don't know what is adventure works just watch my how to install AdventureWorks database in SQL Server playlist. So coming to our today's topic, this is the custom visual in order to download it, go to get more visual, click on these three dots and ensure that you have already logged in here. Now you go here and search for play access. Okay, this is the play, if you type it, it will come and you can say like add. So that will add in your file, there is Power BI file, there is started appearing here. So first try to build some uh, chart similar to the whatever we saw, right? So we will try to get a clustered uh, bar chart. Uh, I want to see the uh, sales amount across various region, okay, or country. So that will be easy to identify. So where is the sales amount? It doesn't uh, came here. So let us try to put once again. There you go. Let me increase the uh, size slightly so that it will be easy to view by everyone. Let me put 16 here. Let me add some kind of um, legend or data labels so that the data will be visible for everyone and i will keep it as uh, auto let it be auto no problem and um, i will increase the size of this okay let us increase it to 12 okay this is fine so this is base uh, report that you need to develop that everyone most of them will aware of now how this can be played automatically right for that we need to have this custom visual you can make use of this okay and by what you want to play okay it requires only a single field you can see here so i can use this field by calendar year let us try to put that one over here calendar year so you can see here as soon as you drag and drop here you get some play accesses over here so you can attach it similar over here so that people will understand this is attached to this this will filter so how it works basically is like this will act as a filter to this entire report so whatever charts you add here that also will be filtered it is not only applicable to this chart okay but uh, as i explained in the internet whatever you see that is uh, part of this uh, visual but this nothing but acting as a one of the visual that is fine so let us try to explore it just click on calendar here now you can see it is for 2011 okay now once you click on play you can see for each year 
it has uh, filtered automatically and display the different results for you as well right so this is what uh, this uh, play visual is all about and um, <clears throat> what i want to highlight is like uh, we will check it out some of the properties over here here you can say like auto start as soon as you launch the report it will keep on loading or not you can say like auto start and loop if you see once the cycle is over this data contains 2011 till 2014 once the entire cycle is gone then it stopped if you want to loop it okay you can enable these two options what it will do it will automatically start and it will keep on entering right now you can see 2011 12 13 and 14 again it will keep on increasing and one of the behavior you can uh, see from this uh, chart is like uh, i don't want looping let us stop uh, this looping first then we will go to other things animation settings and also auto start and you can increase the timing it is uh, 1000 milliseconds i hope uh, it is uh, like uh, one second i think so if you want you can increase 2500 or 2000 based on the how you want to enable it so this is core properties other than that you can change the uh, color uh, over here calendar year uh, whether it's a blue or uh, <coughs> black a uh, select all okay so you see you can change for each and everything as well individual uh, play button or uh, stop button whatever okay that is how you can control it so this is another important property and uh, you have this option the enable caption option whether you want to enable the data to be shown here or not okay that option you have if you don't want to show it you can add a data label here or oh, like uh, you want to choose uh, calendar year over here okay instead of some you say do not summarize or uh, uh, you need to create a column in such a way that it will not summarize okay that is how you need to use it it is summing up it should not be summed up here okay that is what i want to highlight maybe you can use the max of that particular column like that you can have to create a column then you use that particular column another important uh, uh, aspect i want to highlight here is like let me enable the caption here and uh, other properties are very similar always we have seen in the internet it is using the calendar year it is not mandatory it can be a year okay now this is from different uh, products i can use any of the particular uh, text field from the product as well now i'm using the play axis for different colors okay now let us see what will happen now you can see it is filtering for different colors gray multicolor any red okay this is how it is behaving you can see from the diagram so one thing i want to highlight here is like as i said before this acts like a filter so it's better when you view this visual you need to make the edit interaction click on this visual and make this other visuals as filter so that when you play the axis the items will change based on the value it uh, <coughs> has uh, different i mean if different member filters having different values then it will change i hope uh, i can show it uh, for uh, calendar year i tried that that's why i'm telling this when you use this now you can see this australia will move uh, ahead i mean now it's still it is not in filter mode I think it's now in filter mode. Let's see how it goes. Now you can see United States has come down and Australia is moving up and down based on the different here. Now it is for overall year when you play axis. So United States came down and Australia moved here. So this is how it has been designed. So this is going very quick. I have created another derived column for you. Let's see here that contains year and month. Let's try to play this column for this derived column. So I have year and month. Let's play and see how the data moved 
for different months and year now it looks much better when you expand it it is changing so it is stopped so in 2011 may november october there is no data in between years that's why i mean those months that's why it's skipping now you can see the difference the countries are moving but it is not like a smooth transition uh, as you see in the internet but we achieved somewhat similar results in power pi this channel contains the uh, free content worth thousand dollars or eighty thousand worth inr so please utilize this channel which covers ssis ssas ssrs basically microsoft business intelligence platform along with power bi this channel also contains a skill server for beginners they can learn a skill using this playlist